Welcome back to Kevin Pollack's Chat Show. Hi, how are you? I am, as always, Chat Show. We come to you live from our new digs. Uh, we uh, told you at our last show, actually the show before Ivan Reitman, did we, did we know the Ivan Reitman was the last show live and we said it then? Who can remember these things? Uh, write to contact at kevinpollockschatshow.com and remind me, won't you? Anyways, um, this is our first show from our new studio. And if you sense a different feel, a different look, and you want to write to us and let us know how awful it is now, let me tell you in advance, go fuck yourself because we know it's shit. And we're going to lean into it and be proud. This, so, this is the weirdest shoebox I have ever <laughs> been inside. <laughs> More weird than the one you live in. Even weirder than that. At least that one has holes so I can breathe. Sam and I are convinced that we're going to die. Anyway. You guys look... We're trapped. You guys look a little better over there. I'm looking at the monitor. You actually look a little better. Well, we have lighting this you're time. <laughs> we're lit, you see. Uh, I, I see what you're saying, Sammy. And may I say to you, good yantif pontiff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade the lighting for the, the sure death that we are going to suffer at the hands of this room. <laughs> Here's the good news. We turn off the oxygen at, at, at minute 38. So, you won't, you won't be in here long. Great. Um, anyways, new digs. It sucks. It's terrible. Please write to us and tell us so we can laugh about it weeks to come. Uh, but uh, we've only been in the, in the new building less than a week. They uh, lock, stock, and barrel moved it all. Um, yeah, much like they moved the in Indianapolis Colts. Just uh, like from, that. From Baltimore. Uh, in, the, in the dead of night when no one was looking. <laughs> and they moved in the trucks to the, old, to the old studio. And I miss it already. I'm not going to lie to you. We'll be, like, even the quality of your guests is kind of shit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's not necessarily the case, sir, as we're hoped to prove in 74 minutes when you're on. That's right, 74. Um, uh, oh, I know what I wanted to say. I wanted to, um, we, missed the, we missed the Halloween. We had time off for the Halloween. That's why we pre-taped. Oh, and I had yet another birthday. Those have to stop, by the way. You're getting too old. Yeah, it's ridiculous. When you're 60, you're 60. Just let it go. Um, but we had a very interesting Halloween. First time at the new house. And Sammy, we were saving this story for you off the air. I can't wait. I told you we were going to save it for on the air. And um, before this house, we lived in a neighborhood of Venice where you just don't get the trick-or-treaters. So the new house, very exciting. And I'm, I'm asking Jamie to put up the over-under at how many trick-or-treaters we're going to get. She made it 10. It was, you know, easy money. I was being pessimistic. As is your I want. Because I wanted more than As that. is your want, because you secretly wanted 100. So she, she said 10, I took the over. We had uh, between 30 and 40, which was, huh? which is, felt like a shit ton. 30, 40 total trick-or-treaters or 30 and 40 rings? No, uh, to heads. Total bags. 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 Total oh, bags okay. that we put money, uh, okay, money yeah. into. We had no right. candy this year, just money. <laughs> wow. That's what it felt like to me. It was candy. It was. But each time it felt like a dog. I've never seen more candy in a house than your can in your house, so. <laughs> it is a little ridiculous. Yeah. But uh, even Costco goes, you got that much candy for that? Um, so all night she's saying, you know, when I was a kid, the problem in our neighborhood was you would always have some punk who'd come around with no costume mm -hmm. and say trick or treat. Right. Right? No spirit, no effort, just it's Halloween night, I'm gonna get some free candy, and some punk would show up. Hold out his hand. Yeah. No costume. Yeah. Usually with a pillowcase, Jamie? Was that the case? Yeah, uh, yes. They used a, they would have pillowcases. Yes. Yeah. How about that? The pillowcase. We the all nerve. remember the pillowcase. The fucking nerve. But no costume? <laughs> Sammy, what would your response be if you opened the door in Holloway and, and with a bowl of candy yeah. and the kids got no costume on? I would say you're a kid after my own heart, take the whole bag. Because <laughs> <laughs> you hate the Halloween. I hate it. Okay. Uh, Kenny? All right. Um, <laughs> so it goes great. Sure enough, towards the end of the evening, she opens the door, and she's in costume, by the way, Wednesday Adams, from last year when we all went out the Adams family. She's got the Wednesday with the wig and everything. Open the door, and I hear, trick or treat. And I hear Jamie say, oh no, 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 I don't like this. And I'm down the hall watching the uh, Alfred Hitchcock Presents mm. on Halloween night, because it was fun, spooky, scary stuff. And uh, I hear her now arguing with this kid. <laughs> oh, no, that's not right. Where's your costume? And then what did he say? Did he have any reply to where's your costume? He said, I just want some chocolate. I just want some chocolate. And then I said, I will give you a piece of it. And meanwhile, I've been giving everyone like handfuls of candy. And I said, I will give you a piece of candy. 
but I just want you to know that I do not appreciate that you're not wearing a costume. He didn't even have a bag. He just held out his hand. Held out his hand. Just mm -hmm. held out his not hand. Not even a pillowcase. That's right. The hand. Held out his hand. Bag. Yeah. So and I get so I went and I got and I got him Snickers, which I, I think arguably is one of the better candy bars. Some people say it's a meal. So it is. And then he goes. And then I'm down the hall and I I hear I hear her say. I'm going to give you some candy, but I just want you to know, as she said, I do not appreciate this. And I'm thinking, good for her. You gave the guy the kids some lip, and you're still going to give him candy. That way he won't come back for in the morning and burn the house down with his friends. Right. Right? This is all working out great. And then sure. I hear her give the kid the piece of candy, and the kid says, and I quote, Snickers. And then I said, what's wrong with Snickers? The kid actually had the gumption to critique the choice this kid sounds Asian to me. <laughs> Was he an Asian boy? It's hard to gauge based no. on the impression you're doing. No. He sounds maybe maybe Latin American? Nope. No. You're mm. swimming around it. I can't I quite. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to give me a sticker? I worked so hard on the costume with the sweater that looks like Shag Carpenter. You know. <laughs> so, Snickers. Yeah. And I, I hear that from down the hall, and I go, oh, no, you didn't. But she let it go. Well, that's smart, because yeah. I'd like to point out, just be, one Snickers bar does not mean he will not come back and burn your house down. <laughs> he knows where you live. Which is why I did not go to the door. Well, he yeah. knows where she lives. I stay away from the door. But, oh, man. Uh, and then the Magic Castle we went to the night before it burned no. down. Yes. We went to the Magic Castle. No, two so, days before. It, it, it caught on fire on... Uh, Monday. So what you're saying is the Magic day. Castle did not give him Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> he went there too, did not get what he came for, that's exactly and right. had his way with the building. That's exactly that's right. right. Very well. See, that's what happens. That's what happens. That's what happens, man. If you don't give up the candy. Um, what were the other Halloween related? Uh, I guess that was, uh, that was it. Yeah, the Magic Castle was, also it was an off night for the castle. We found out the place is taken over by douches and whores. It was terrible. We went there thinking, oh, this is going to be people that are actually, like, they're going to sp spooky up the Magic Castle. It's going to be people that are into it, yeah. that were into Halloween. No, it was treated like a nightclub. Some woman that was dressed as a cop wearing panties and a shirt and fishnets tried to hug Kevin. I almost had to punch a bitch out. It was horrible. <laughs> Oh. Can't get away from it. Even though I want to give props to, there was this one couple. She was dressed as Barf from Spaceballs. Yes. John Candy, which was awesome. Her costume was amazing. And her boyfriend was the gremlin on the wing from the original Twilight Zone. And with the makeup and everything and like the shag carpet yeah. get up. They were great. But other than that, no. Everyone was dressed like a whore. As douches, usual. douches and whores. And we also found out that the magicians must know that it's an off night because all the sea level magicians were there. Right. Oh, like yeah, they were guy. so hacky. Well, all the A-level yeah. magicians got hired out by millionaires exactly. to go play their private parties. I see what you're saying, Sam. Which one were you at? Uh, <laughs> I was at a cafe in Los Feliz, and uh, as I was walking to the bathroom, an actual policeman walked out of the bathroom, and I said, <laughs> nice costume. <laughs> and you spent the night in the, in the... In the clink. In the clink. It was great. <laughs> Um, those of you who missed the, uh, the Jim Gaffigan last night, he was in town performing at the club Nokia. Uh, he was hilarious, and you should see him next time he's in town or anywhere near you, because he just keeps getting better. It's ridiculous. It's not even fair. And he keeps having babies, and he really could use the money. Yeah, and he, <laughs> excellent point. He's up to 17 He's babies. like, yes, he has like said, no, 400 babies. 400. 400. 400 babies. <laughs> um, Sammy, anything else? What else you got for us? Uh. Nice. Yeah. That's what I was counting on. I had nothing for you. Jamie, you want to recount how nervous you were at the Pens game last night? Penguins. My goodness. Playing the Kings. I was my just goodness. walking back and All night long, like, she was on the porch saying, my goodness. My goodness. I was, I was like, horrible. I was so nervous. I was mumbling to myself. It went I to OT. It went to um, shootout, shootout. And then, and then it then went sudden to sudden death. death. And it was, it was such a tight, it was such a close game. It was so nerve-wracking. I was in a good section, a lot of Penguins fans. We were surrounded by Penguins. She was okay. yelling out um, landmarks from, from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh to test the reaction to how... And everyone got into it. Like yelling out, Permanis! Squirrel Hill Tunnel! The Swan Sandwich Place. <laughs> and people were yelling out, yeah, I mean, it was really, Yinling! <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> uh, reminding you that uh, the chat show is coming to the Hulu.com, and uh, please continue to look out for that. We're still, with the meta and the beta testing, it's uh, considerably more involved than we were uh, initially led to believe, but... 
All this work will be incredible when the entire library launches on Hulu, hopefully in the next week. Uh, if you want to write to us again, as always, it's uh, uh, contact at kevinpollockschatra.com. Now we go to which one first, Kenny? Ask Kevin? Yeah, sure. If only there was a graphic we could throw up. Ask Kevin. Look at that. I got a desk and a martini and a cigar. Uh, this one from Mike Bosley. Dear Chat Show, loving the show, been a fan since day one. Hard to watch live in Germany, but rock the iTunes. Been stationed in, and then there's a word I can't pronounce, Weisbaden. Weisbaden? I can't Close? see it. Weisbaden. So. For six years, KPCS has been a godsend to keep me in touch with America. Six years? Kana. Did you I get six years? The, they, they've been stationed there, not watching. Six, Very well. Six years, yeah. Very well. Uh, but, uh, but enough about you. What does Sam have coming up in the future? See? Uh, that is not what the question is. That's that absolutely the, <laughs> That's the question. What does Sam have? Well, one M, but uh, yes. All right. Um, if he's a fan of karaoke, mm -hmm. I can be seen nightly, <laughs> nightly. at the various stages across Los Angeles. <laughs> nightly. There you go. And your uh, song of choice? I think we all know it, that. It really varies by the night. It, it all depends on how I feel, what the crowd wants. All right. Well, that was... <laughs> how I'm dressed. Uh, nice. Yeah. How I'm dressed. This one from Jason in Bloomington, uh, Illinois. Oh, he loves that. Dear Chat Show, I was viewing an archived episode and thought you said something about broadcast television talk show on being under discussion. Did I hear you right? Are there any further developments? If I heard wrong, what would be your ideal TV talk show format? Would it be in the fashion of the gold standard Johnny Carson, in parentheses, and yes, I shamelessly dropped his name to prompt your awesome impression of him, in parentheses. Would you use the monologue, sketch to guest, music act format, or would you try to do a TV version of your web show? I really enjoy your format and the freedom the internet interweb offers, uh, affords you, and it seems your guests genuinely enjoy a real conversation. It'd be a shame to lose your show to TV. Now, allow me to get out of your face. Signed, Jason in Bloomington, Illinois, one block south of normal. P.S. There's a P.S. We're about halfway through this. If you need an announcer to introduce you each night on TV, I'd like to audition. It would be a dream job for me. Would it? Um, you know, that's actually how Bruce Willis got his acting career started. He just asked. <laughs> Yeah. He just said, hey, hey, are you looking for an actor? Hey. Because I'd like to volunteer myself. It'd be a dream for me. Dear Nakatomi. And just like that, movie star. Dear Nakatomi building. It's pretty exciting. Can I save you? <laughs> Apparently this guy knew that story. Yes. <laughs> and decided to try it himself. Um, so he watched an old episode when I was going on about the, well, there's talks of bringing the chat show to television. Mm -hmm. uh, those talks continue. Uh, I'm not privy to them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's agents involved and efforts are being made, and all I can tell you is uh, you would not lose this show to the television. You would get a, uh, a cropped version while this one continued live. Uh, I've sort of made it... Uh, the only line in the sand for me is build us a studio, you know, anything to get out of the shoebox that Sammy clearly doesn't appreciate. I love the shoebox. Yeah, yeah. I'm very comfortable. I'm not a big man. No, nope. not asking much. Six by six? Eh. That's generous. What you had in the joint? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't see my cellmate was on top of me the whole time. <laughs> well, you're popular. <laughs> Past the mirror? He was just trying to keep me warm, he said. <laughs> and did he? Well. Sort of we'll, warming from inside. We'll talk about this off the air. <laughs> we'll talk about it off the air? Really? Gets a little uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, so we'll keep you posted, apparently, how, how that, wherever the fuck that develops. But do trust me. The live interweb version will continue uh, un, uh, untouched and unedited, uh, which is another great thing we love about the Hulu, by the way. The, the license the deal we're making is uh, for the, not only the entire library, but the show in its entirety, uh, not edited in, uh, for length in any way, shape, or form. Now we have How Do I Do KPCS. How do you watch or listen to the show? Folks, write to us at contact at kevinpollockschatter.com. Please let us know. This one from Carolyn, Gainesville, Florida. Oh, God, I had a hell gig in Gainesville, Florida, the Swamp, which is where the, uh, the football stadium is, the, uh, the Gators. Mm. Bless, Bless you. Bless. Bless. And uh, it's, uh, you perform in front of 90,000 people. I told the story in the show before. I don't want to go into it again. Uh, I just landed in a nursing home, me too, for rehab after an accident caused me to get a total knee replacement. 
Since my 99-year-old roommate didn't want the TV on after 8 p.m., what a Scrooge. I luckily knew I could delve into the KPCS archives and listen or watch on my iPhone. Just got back home this week. Your craziness saved my sanity. I know. I know. Go fuck myself. Carolyn, Gainesville, Florida. See? They're catching on. They really are. It's an, it's, the I should, we should do new t-shirts that we give away. Instead of Kevin Pollock's tattoo, they should say, I'll go fuck myself. They'd be very popular at kids' parties. Right? Look, Tommy. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> um, so that's how she does it. She does the iPhone and the uh, rehab. All right, this, the next one is from Pete Carasquillo, because that's a name. Hello, Kevin and crew. Here's the most common way I have been watching the show lately. I stream it from iTunes via Apple TV to a large computer monitor that I use as a TV. I'm one of the many that have cut the cord, as they say. I also use my iPad to watch when traveling or my phone while commuting. So, when are you coming to Philly next? Pete Carasquillo, in parentheses, because that's my name. He knew I'd make fun of it. And here's a little screenshot. Uh, or photograph, for those of you living in 2009, um, of him with his rig. I love the bookshelf to the right. That's what brings it all home for me. Um, what are we looking at there, studio apartment? <laughs> That's his kitchen. All right, yeah. Um, and a doctor's diploma on the wall. Uh, well, thank you for that. Uh, continue to let us know how you're watching. Uh, but in order to get a t-shirt, we've made this clear. The other uh, fun on the show is called the Larry King Game. And we ask that you write in your version of the Larry King Game. And if I read it on the air, we'll send you a t-shirt. Please let us know your size. Today's winner sent in an audio recording of their Larry King Game. You can also upload video Larry King Games, I believe, to the site, kevinpollockschapter.com. Let's take a listen to this week's winner. Shall we? This reminds me of the greatest kiss I ever got. I was playing Spin the Bottle with Ruth, Buzzy, Janet Lee, and Lawrence Welk. We were smoking some primo Jamaican. Jesus Christ, that man could kiss. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, you're on. That's how you win. You just uh, you put that together. Jesus, that man can kiss. I was getting applause from the outer uh, audience. I was confused, mm. yet delighted and entertained. Uh... The character within the story that mm -hmm. he mentioned, mm -hmm. who was it, Liberace? No. Anybody paying attention? I'll... It uh, Or if it was uh, Jesus Christ, that was such a great kisser. I don't think it was Jesus Christ. No? No, I think it was the man. Okay. Uh, I want to thank the fine folks at the Peter Pit down on the Hermosa Beach for supplying some wonderful grub today. And then the Gurren Brothers, of course, for the hat. Go to Gurren.com, you sons of bitches. Congratulations again to L.D. Phelps, our Larry King winner. Um, yes, it's time to introduce our guest, and it's oh. only been 74 minutes, as, as promised. Uh, those of you that saw the, uh, the wonderful clip at the top of the show, uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, it's a new project uh, that our guest uh, is, uh, is very excited about, as are we. Um, Evan with Tonight at Crackle.com. Uh, but uh, so many of us became aware of today's guest through the, uh, the television. The uh, wildly popular, uh, the Seinfeld show, that Jamie and Sam can quote verbatim every episode that ever aired. Pretty because much. that's what their generation, it's the Simpsons or the Seinfeld, right? Don't forget Friends. I didn't watch it. See? She wasn't in the loop. I was I not in the loop. I did not watch Friends. Nope. But Seinfeld and the Simpsons... For your late 20s, early 30s, every episode that ever aired. Yes. Um, I was surprised by the dossier to find out that our guests did not appear in 37 episodes, which mm -hmm. is kind of the impression that, uh, that the fan had, I think. Right, right. This guy was in, no, got busy doing a show with the Harry Anderson called Dave's World. Loved that show. Had to say no to the number one show while the number 74 show uh, he was working on a weekly basis. You know, Shadow Stevens, you know, we'll Shadow get to that. could we'll not get to be that. here, so instead, we'll get to that. I see. Uh, our first guest from the New Digs were unbelievably excited and embarrassed. <laughs> Mr. Patrick Warburton. Our embarrassment is for the studio. Let's be super clear about that, forget? sir. Uh, thank you for putting up with our tiny, tiny... There it is. In fact, it took a while to get you into the studio. 
technically. It is. <laughs> yeah. We had to bring you in through the roof because you had uh, the... Because the, I'm that big. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing. You, uh, uh, maybe it's from the, the Venture Brothers. For me, personally, that such a great character. He is uh, gigantic. Brock. Yeah. Samson. Brock Sampson is, is literally the size of a Coke machine with shoes. He is pretty, yeah. Yeah. He is, he's massive. He uh, the cartoon world. Right. The unreal. <laughs> still considered large. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, and broad shouldered, let's be honest. He could not fit in here. He Brock's. is, uh, yeah, he's pretty uh, badass, dude. Yeah. Now, in that situation, is that, uh, did you, do you see drawings beforehand? No. I mean, they give you a description of the character and as you. As I recall, yeah, you just kind of did it. So you, it was fun to find, find to see what he looked like, you know. You right. don't always know. Um, I mean, back when I did uh, the Emperor's New Groove years ago, yes. I didn't even know what a cronk was. How could you? Because Disney doesn't give you scripts. You get three pages. Seriously? Yeah, there's a cronk and an Yzma. And I'm like, well, is, he, is he a robot or a monster or a, a troll or what? I don't know. But and I just thought, what does a cronk sound like? And know? how did they describe to you what they had in mind? Or did they? They, they? they didn't. You know, you just kind of come up with a voice and you go in there and uh, wow. you know, just create like a, a character. You know, and they, it either appeals to them, right, or it doesn't. The voice yeah. quality. Yeah. But I, so, <laughs> so three pages is all you got. It was three or five pages. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that world is uh, an absolute mystery to me. And my understanding from the dossier is forever people were telling you, or kind of in your face, you need to do this work. You need to do the voiceover stuff. You need to do the animation. And your sense being an actor was, do I? And then now you've sort of found this incredible cottage industry. Um, well, I kind of wanted to do it. Yeah. I got four kids, and I've always loved cartoons and Disney and all that good stuff. So um, I had um, I just sort of threw it out there, and it was it, it was at a good time. So the door because I know it's a very competitive yeah. field, voiceover work. It's impossible to get into. It's it's a it's a hard one. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of I kind of snuck in because it was during the last season of Seinfeld, which ah. also Jerry had said. This is the last season of the show. So everybody was watching it, but even more so because Jerry announced it before it even went on. And that, that's when I did the majority of my nine episodes. Yeah. Seven episodes during that last season. Was it seven in that one season? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. And um, so I expressed an interest, and that's when uh, I went in to meet for The Emperor's New Groove. And then uh, and I did Buzz Lightyear that year, the TV series. The TV series. Yeah, you were the only other person besides Tim to do the voice. Is that right? Yes. Right. And he... Did you send him a little note saying thanks for not agreeing to do the series? He, uh, yeah. Because... I'm like, I'll be your poor man's buzz. I know you won't do the TV show. You're too big. Chances so, are... Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so then I went in and did... It was... I went and played golf with uh, John O'Hurley one day, and Tim Allen's manager... Oh, boy. ...was, was out there, right? And it's like 12 years ago. He didn't, he, he didn't, he didn't know who the heck I was. He had mm. no idea. Nice. And so we're, so I, I start, I start, did I? No, just keep going. This is fine. He's not going to try anything. He might. Nasty. Just though. enjoy it. Oh. <laughs> Woo. I, Sam. <laughs> yeah. We're having some sad issues. Hello. <laughs> you know what? This isn't your first time at the rodeo, my friend, because. I think I got it. That was spectacular. Thank you. Can I, you I don't last long. I don't last long. <laughs> you probably don't even know when I reached my moment of climax. My wife usually doesn't. Mm. See how I threw that in there? To let you know, I am hetero. Yeah. My wife. Let's be clear. But most of we all refer to them as our girlfriends. Uh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. How's the sound now? Does it, it should sound, be better. Is it's it better? It's not plugged in. I hope so. It What's costs our, both, it costs both of us issue? an awful lot, Sam. Yeah. Um, now that you're with sure. us. Yeah. Uh, what, um, oh, so I'm playing golf with, 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 with uh, Tim's manager, and I said, uh, so Tim didn't do the uh, C the TV series, right? Uh, bu the Buzz Lightyear series. He says, no. I go, uh, do you know who did it? He goes, uh, no. I go, have you heard it? He goes, yeah. I go, well, what do you guys think of it? He says, ah, we don't like it very much. <laughs> you, you trapped him. You totally trapped him. I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't recall that day if I ever even let it out of the, uh, the cab bag. That that was me doing it. I'm like, of course he's not going to like it. I do it very differently than he does. You, you um, owned it. You made it your own. I made it my own. Well, yeah. I wasn't going to copy him. But he, he cursed my name because he had to go in. And the first three episodes we did, 
they decided they wanted to put it out on uh, DVD. And so, so even though I had voiced it and we have very different um, uh, rhythms, vocal rhythms and whatnot, I changed it all. And now they want Tim to, okay. to, 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 to he's got an ADR three episodes. It took him day, weeks, I think, to have to do it. And just, you know, every time he's trying to find my rhythm, and he had to, have to change everything to loop it with the, the he mouth. Did. So he, he did not like you. He didn't. No. And then, but then I ended up working with him on a film called Big Trouble in Florida. Yeah. And we had a lot of fun and we got along good. And then we ended up on the, the set of, uh, we did a film called Joe Somebody, where I smacked the crap out of him in front of his 10 year old daughter. Nice. Real, real nice. And uh, that wasn't the one he directed. Joe somebody. No, no. he interrupted. And, uh, and uh, it was that day I said, uh, it's probably, uh, probably your worst nightmare. I voiced your character and following you from set to set. Now I'm smacking the shit out of you in front of your kid. <laughs> I wish we could be friends. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about, um, was it Barry Sonnefeld that did Big Trouble? Yeah. Because I know you guys worked together on The Tick. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we did The Tick. Um, and according to your dossier, you at some point realized he may be your favorite talk show guest on Letterman. Because what, I read that and it yeah. stood out for me because he's one of my favorites. Yeah. He's a phenomenal talk show yeah. guest. And it's not an, an easy thing to be great at. No. At all. Yeah. Especially for someone who does, is technically not an on-camera talent. Well, he's very, very funny. Mm -hmm. And um, very, very sharp. Not afraid to be himself. Not afraid to be himself. And wickedly neurotic. I mean, insanely neurotic. And he just just goes with it. Yeah. So he is fun to, fun to watch. And to work with. And I haven't not had the pleasure. Yeah. What was your experience like in terms of, because you did a little piece in the, uh, the Men in Black 2 also. Yeah, I did Men in Black, I, I did, uh, worked with him on that. Well. You may be his lucky charm. Um, well, I don't know about that. Barry, <laughs> are you? <laughs> are you watching this, Barry? Uh, I don't know, I, I know they just, uh, they just uh, shot Men in Black 3 and Somehow you didn't, didn't get the call. I don't, the I don't know. Not even for a little cameo or anything. But it's no big deal, mm -mm. you know. I'm, You're gameplay I'm doing other stuff. For fuck's stuff. sake. Um, uh, but he's know, cool. He's cool. Yeah, and I and, and I really I really like Barry, and I, it's a, it's a blessing when somebody as talented as Barry, you know, calls up and says they want to work with you. I've been fascinated by his career for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. One, he started out as one of immediately one of the best cinematographers. Mm -hmm. As soon as he came on the scene, just a stunning eye, uh, yeah. and, and very original. And the transition to film directing was seemed fairly easy because yeah. he was so damn impressive as a cinematographer. And then when I saw him on Letterman, I was like, yeah. "This guy's a superstar. Yeah. He's fucking insane yeah. and hilarious, yeah. but crazy." Yeah. And very happy with everyone knowing it. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not sure that Bar that Barry's first uh, DP job was like in m legit movies. I think he might. Have, I, 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 Are you I, suggesting he came from the world of porn? I, I you heard so something. I about heard that? something that he may have, may have shot a blue movie or two. That's <laughs> rumor. or maybe he liked just blue hue for a lot of his movies. Maybe oh, maybe that's what you heard. Uh, Raising Arizona was he not someone yeah. IMDb this? I'm pretty sure he was the uh, who what? no. What? The DP the, on Raising Arizona. Barry Sonnefeld. Could be oh. right. That sounds like one of those little facts you go, look oh, up, I didn't know look that. Up, or it could be some of his uh, credits on, uh, on there for, uh, for his DP work, and I'll back up some of my play. But uh, hopefully they've listed the, uh, the blue work that he did as well. Um, Let's see if we can find that. Yeah, please, write to us immediately. Um, we, we do. This is live, right? I can't retract any of that if I might have just outed. You know, <laughs> oh, I, I don't think you're the first to let everyone know. Also, also, it's based on you hearing tell. I'm hearing tell, so right? I'm not saying yeah. this is what This happened. isn't something he shared I'm, with you. Right. I'm just saying, too, knowing Barry, I get it. We confirm that he was the DP on Raising Arizona. Well done, Kevin. Thank you very much. And one of the most original-looking films, and, of course, the Coen brothers mm -hmm. being the masters of that, a great coming-out moment from um, Blood Simple, I mm -hmm. believe it was their film prior to that, and there was this just tremendous look, uh, which is the first thing that sort of, um, not just their great crazy style, yeah. uh, but that, that awesome look. Um, I, I want to, uh, we jump around a little bit here. We, we mentioned that we are uh, streaming live, and we do bring in questions from the audience, so we'll have some of those for you watching live. Born in New Jersey. Another guest what the heck? from New Jersey. Remember that? Yeah. Remember when we were both born there? 
Yeah. That was pretty great. <laughs> Patterson, New Jersey, 1964. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Bergen County, but I wasn't, I wasn't born there. Oh, you weren't born there. Where were you born? Chicago. Oh, okay. But you were raised, basically, raised whole in, life. Raised in North Jersey. Yeah. 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 Patterson, did you go to school there with uh, when Morgan Freeman was the president or the principal? I left when I was three. Okay. But I've always, <laughs> I was, even from the early days, I always said, you know, whenever anybody in town asked where I was from, I said, I'm from New Jersey. Because then you get street cred. Yeah. And if I said, you know, well, I'm from Huntington, Huntington Beach, Beach, and I would like to be an actor. Yeah. So I was wondering, uh, I'm going to go to a workshop first. I'm going to start by doing some print work. This is my actual career. I did, start, I did a little print work. You were a model. <laughs> At least we forget. Well. Uh, it's a strange word to use at this point. I just don't feel comfortable with that. Uh, but that is what, I guess that's what I did. Yeah. I modeled. Uh, as a matter of fact, like myself, you were a college dropout. Proud of you. Mm -hmm. In your case, not like mine, it was to run off to Europe to uh, do a little modeling work. For a month or two. Yeah, which, by the way, was instantly boring, and you hated it. It was instantly boring. I'm yeah. guessing. It was, except the fact I did that you a... were 19, and there was. Well, I did a Duran Duran video there. That was kind of cool. Uh, I played a centaur. I'm going to need to know more, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't only see my legs in this uh, video, my skinny legs, but I had a horse's head on, and. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I literally I got on a train for four hours to go to a set to do this video where I got to be a horse's ass, basically. So someone saw your modeling work yeah. and said, could we use your calves yeah. for a Duran Duran music video? I don't know. I remember going on an audition. I'm like, really? How do you audition for, for this? Um, is this so, so somebody can feel important? <laughs> I hired him to <laughs> right. be the center. What would have... Uh, if just some random guy showed up, why would they fire him? <laughs> yeah, it's not going to work with How you. How do you blow that job? Uh, good, good news for you, we have a clip. What? Yep. <laughs> Let's go to the clip now. This is the Duran Duran video. <laughs> Please roll this. Totally kidding. Fabulous. <laughs> totally kidding. Don't have it. It's uh, on YouTube. <laughs> it's on I YouTube. want everybody to see it. It's Listen, on YouTube? My... It's on YouTube? Yeah. It's, we can it, definitely pull it up. Yeah, which, which, what, uh, which song? It, it's Election Day. Oh. And it's actually with Simon Le Bon and Nick Rhodes. Okay. If we can please pull it up from the other room and somehow make that magic happen. Can we do this? Please, people. <laughs> It'll help me get over how the lighting is fading in here. No, you're just um, <laughs> Am I stroking? <laughs> you're a little stroking. Am I a little stroking just again or are the lights slightly fading? I'm not kidding. It's a little less. Anyway. Is your left arm numb? Uh huh. And I smell toast. No, taste toast. You mm. smell burning, burning toast. Burning toast. Um, mm. So it was Go West uh, war burdens at a very young age, the age of three, you say, to the honey. <laughs> there it Wait is. Wait a minute. Election day. Wait a minute. It's coming up for you. Uh, look for the centaur. Legs of. Never mind the quality. Go for Never mind yourself. the sound. Yeah. Oh, or the sound. Which, there it oh, is. Oh, hello. There he wow. is. Might be. And then the cutaway too. I don't get it. All right. And this then, is this is the embarrassing thing too. There were four centaurs. So I still look at it and I go, I think those are my legs. I think I'm that one. Centaur number three. Yeah. I'm one of them. Oh man, I auditioned for that part. Uh, there's uh, there's there's two centaurs. Yeah, we saw two. Mm. Centaurs. Yeah, we can't show more than five seconds at a time, otherwise yeah. it violates fair use. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand. Think that that's the rule. Oh, is that it? Okay. Um, Back home, dear yeah. God, please. But uh, the family moved, as you said, when mm. you were very, very young. Your father was an orthopedic surgeon. Your mom, an actress. Yeah. Um, had she started that before the move, or is that something she's, uh, I guess, doing theater? Oh, she, she did it actually she, the exact opposite. When they were in New York, she was an actress, and she would fly to California to work. Mm. But uh, my dad kind of wanted her out of the business, and, uh, and so uh, got her pregnant four years in a row. Sure. That did the trick. That'll and, do her. Uh, she she did she left the she left the business. So, Any Irish uh, twins in there? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah. What is what is the cutoff? Right? It's if it's two babies born less than one year apart. Yeah, that would. Yeah, that's right. That's my sister. My my uh, my old sister. I have three younger sisters, and but my sister Mary and I are eleven months apart. Yeah. Wow, it's impressive. Uh, yeah. Well, my mom did it. She did it all. <laughs> it? But thank you. Special lady. Congratulations. Thank you. So when you move uh, to the West Coast, yeah. is there, uh, there's got to be a local theater that she's involved she in? She would do community theater to right. sort of sate, the, the, you know, get out there and just do something. But she stopped working. There are things she wouldn't do in the business because she's very, very... Proper? Yes, and devout Catholic. Irish and, Catholic? Yeah. 
She wouldn't do a, a play on Broadway with George C. Scott because she would have had to play prostitute. She wouldn't do that. Wouldn't yeah. have it. She wouldn't have it. No. And um, wow. Yeah, but she you know, she was uh, she did very well. I mean, she had accomplished a lot by the time she was 23, 24. She um, would have had a great career. She we was, looked her up on the IMDb. She was constantly working. Yeah. Constantly working. Yeah. Uh, so when things start to, when you come back uh, mm -hmm. from Europe at 19, 20. 20 and you say, you know what, I'm gonna give this acting thing a go. What the hell? What is her feeling? What is her take on this? Oh, she, she was fine. I mean, they, 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 they had given up on me at that point. They knew that had I they? wasn't. Well, you know, when you're a, yeah. Um, I'm making C's at the local junior college. I wasn't, uh, uh -huh. I don't think it's that I'm dumb. I'm not the, I'm not the sharpest uh, tool in the shed, but uh, I fell asleep in every single class. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was rowing crew in the morning, I would fall asleep. I, 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 I had never even had a cup of coffee at that point. If I had started drinking coffee, I think I would have got an education. But isn't it on the, uh, the teachers to keep us awake? That's where I put the, the onus. I put it on the teachers. They bored, yeah. they bored me and I was done too. I, they had a sex ed class and I just thought, this is a great way to get some credits and, you know, should be interesting. Learn a thing or two. Yeah. <laughs> and I would fall asleep in there, so. <laughs> Uh, but I, I know all this. Yeah, I slept through sex ed, but I am uh, the proud father of four beautiful yes, children. So, so apparently, did something right. Four times. <laughs> you could think off your feet, as yes. it were. Uh, all right. So you've had, you've taken way too much shit for the hundred lashes. So far be it for me to bring up this a film moment uh, from your 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 working life. Uh, uh, but does it? I, I, how many times did you have to have it uh, thrown out there before you said, you know what, this is, this is not fun for me anymore? Oh, you, you, I, At the time, I'm sure, yeah. as a young man, being yeah. in this movie was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, but have to uh, have jerks like me bring yeah. it up all these years later. Oh, no. What's yeah, the name of the film? Dragon Art. Sure. And I want to you know, keep uh, Dragon Art alive. I Can we go to YouTube for Dragon Art? It is, uh, for years I would tell, uh, I just talked about it. the worst movie ever made. It is just horrible. And then I realized, you know, you, you really are the worst thing in it and you have to own it. You don't want to move on, you have to accept your responsibility. I think. But I absolutely. But you're 20 years old. 21, 22? Uh, I was 21 or 22 when yeah. I went to uh, yeah, South Africa. It was a great experience. I, uh, I got drunk every night with Oliver Reed. That was awesome. Oh, I'm going to need a little more on that, sir. Yeah. There's a tattoo on his dick, which he showed me the third night. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is fantastic. We had, we had it took 134 it. guests yeah. to finally get to the tattoo Oliver on dick. Oliver Reed's yeah. dick. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately, his, his wife was there, and she said, you know, Ollie, put that little thing away. <laughs> uh, she was 24, he was 49. He met her when she was 16, but was Ooh. handsome though, right? Do we have a shot of Oliver Reed's dick? Now look at how, look, now look at the look. Here we go, the look. Oh, <laughs> yes. A connection's been made there. <laughs> right. Uh, we can't have any more than five seconds on a clip, right? <laughs> we can't. We're not allowed. So, uh, he met her when she was 16 years old. They went on a cruise. When she, I got this well, they had to be on international waters to break the 16-year-old. I get I, Her mother came along as a chaperone. Wait now. Yeah. But uh, apparently she had pursued him. Sure. The girl had pursued him. I understand. Um, he was Oliver Reed, for fuck's sake. Yeah. And um, so... But anyways, we were there. It was like the third night. I was so intimidated by him because he was he was so brilliant, brilliant, but dangerous and insane. You know? Yeah. And but in that crazy, um, a fun way, yeah. adventurous. Yeah. The stories are endless. Yeah. Um, yeah. He and uh, Harris yeah. and Burton. Uh, the stories are are, yeah. are legendary. Yeah. So to be in that company. Were you aware of the legend going in? Oh my God, this is Oliver Reed kind of thing? Uh, I was. I also, you know, at first wondered, why is he doing this piece of shit? But it was because he was too much of a liability. They couldn't hire, he couldn't do a major film because... Uh, couldn't get insurance. They couldn't insure it, yeah. And, and then, ultimately, he, he had garnered some, um, you know, uh, I know uh, uh, some, uh, I don't know to say, respect. Um, right. They hired him to do Gladiator. Right. And they took a chance. And it cost him, it cost him millions of dollars because he, the, for the exact reason, he died in the middle of making a film in a bar on Malta and it cost them millions of dollars in post. So that's why I couldn't insure him. Don't hire Oliver Reed because yeah. he'll die on you. But he would, he would try to get me drinking whiskey at 10 o'clock in the morning every day on the set, you know. 
Can I stop by? Go. You got to give me till five p.m. Just give me till five p.m. <laughs> you have a I'm line. Saying, you have a line in the sand. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. He crossed it. I'm not saying. Look, if we haven't wrapped by five p.m., it's cool. I'll still drink. But I, <laughs> I can't start before. What you know. time did Eartha Kitt try to get you to start drinking? Oh my God! You knew Eartha was within 50 yards of you because she ate raw garlic every day. And it'd be like, oh my God. And there she was 50, 50 feet back, you'd see her. You could smell her constantly. She, um, I mean, one of the weirdest, silliest things ever, it was, it was a total Emperor's New Groove moment because Eartha was, do, was performing at the Roosevelt. And of course, she did the voice of Yzma, did the voice of Kronk, her henchman. So, so, oh, no, no, no. The, but this was, when I saw her, this was before we had done The Emperor's New Groove. Oh, really? Which is so strange. Um, she was film. So I go to the Roosevelt, I'm like 23, 24 at this time, and I watch her perform, um, and, um, and I get invited up to her room afterwards. Just you? Just me. Really? And she's sitting on a couch, and she's got one of her pooches, <laughs> and she's like, darling, how have you been? This is right out I'm of like, a movie. This yeah, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, good, good Mrs. Kit, and uh, I'm like, I started getting this really uneasy feeling. Did you? Like, like any, anything. She'd be cool with anything. <laughs> Didn't see that coming when you got the invite? <laughs> no. No. And um, You thought I, she'd be cool with anything. It was, it, it, was just, it was just one of the most uncomfortable moments. We, nothing in common except for the fact that we had done this horrible movie together, you know. I'm, I mean, I, I, and I couldn't have grown up in a more sheltered, you know, you know, and here, I mean, yeah, your mom is not going to hear this story until now. No, and I, look, I'm not going to, you know, nothing happened. But listen, <laughs> uh, I, I left, I sort of left with my tail between my legs. I was, uh, it was odd. And then, you know, 10 years later, we're doing The Emperor's New Groove. And right. we're, we're essentially play, like playing those two characters. There's an uncomfortable moment where, you know. Does she remember the previous outing when you guys were um, in the movie together? Well, then, you know, when we did that, I said, remember when we did those horrible movies together? And she goes... Oh, I'm sure we had fun," she said. Uh -huh. I, 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 she was like, you know, I don't think uh, uh, it, it was weird because I was saying they're horrible movies, but in a sense, then you're telling somebody that they did a horrible movie right. too, you know. Right. But she must have known. She at some point, but why should you have to bring it up? Um, right. So it took three outings before Oliver Reed says, "Have you seen the tattoo?" Uh, yeah. Is that how he broaches it? Does he assume you know of the legend of the tattooed penis? That's another movie coming out soon, right? <laughs> it's, it's based on the off-Broadway play. Right. Well, he, he, uh, I don't, I don't recall saying, "Hey, can I see your dick?" <laughs> Thank you. You know what? <laughs> and I, dick. and I, then, I, it just as it turns out, there's a tattoo on it. I, I have a quote actually. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can I see your dick? Uh, um, I, that's you know. Listen, it's not a it's not it's not an unnatural question that I'm that one might be curious as to how it comes up in conversation. Yeah. But if you're Oliver Reed and you're a drunk and you love to be adventurous and sh swashbuckling, and you have a tattoo mm -hmm. on your penis, it's right. something that you're kind of looking forward to. It's, it's more than an icebreaker. It's a why did you why did you go through that shit if you're not going to show it to people? It's a party maker. To people. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a closer, I would think, yeah. at some point. <laughs> yeah, that's too. right. Why he's showing you is a yeah. different reason. Um, other than uh, to him, it would probably be just be a laugh. Yeah. Right. Now, am I wrong to ask what the tattoo is of? Uh, it was eagles, like talons, going over the tip. Nope. Yeah. No. Nope. Over the tip. Yeah. No. <laughs> not not yeah. not both talons. Really? Yeah. Not a talon. And by the way, not the inspiration for my son's name. So your name. son's Talon. name. Yes. It's your not. Your son's name is Talon. That's right. Oh, it's the actual inspiration for that was years before that, uh, before, um, before my wife and I were even married, we were camping. There's an owl up overhead in a tree, and we were just listening to it who, and we couldn't see. We were talking about birds of prey, and I thought Talon would be a great name for a boy. I never liked my name growing up, and, you know, uh, I wanted some. I wanted like a name like Han Solo or something, you know. Right. Patrick, or so everybody can call me Patty. Um, it's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Talon, there's no Talon. Mis, mis, yes. mis, misunderstanding. My father's first response was when he found out I was naming my firstborn son Talon. He goes, "That's asinine. Why don't you just call him Claw?" And I go, <laughs> "I go, uh, well, uh, hey, why don't we call your best buddy Dick Penis? How about that?" <laughs> he goes, "All right, point made." But. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, um, and by the way, my son loves his name. I Do, mean, does he? Great, yeah, it's a great name. It really is a great name. Because he's at an age now where he would tell you otherwise. Yeah, I think so. Right? 
Yeah. 12? How old is You could tell. Oh, he's 19. He'll be, he'll be 19 November 29th. He'll be 19. Another November, baby. Yeah. You're in November. I'm November, yeah. Yeah. October, November. Somebody said it's because of the, uh, the Valentines. Hmm. And then nine months later, you got your October, November. And, uh, and for his birthday, I go, for his birthday, he wants to go in a cage and uh, meet a great white shark. So that's what we're doing in two weeks. We're going up to San Francisco and we're going to go do that, the Farallon Islands trip. And, uh, Have you done it before? No, just... no. So I'm, I'm really excited. Once your son lets it known that that's what he wants, you start doing a little research. And by that, I mean your assistant. Starts doing a little research mm -hmm. and gets you all the information you need about how to be in a cage. Mm -hmm. And you, as a father, mm -hmm. at some point said, this is going to be cool. Yeah. How, uh, how safe did you feel you... I mean, they've been doing this for a long time. I think they've been doing it for a long time. I think it's, you know... Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it just cool. sounds crazy. Well... You know, the most myth-dispelling thing I've ever seen is the sharkman who actually dives in, you know, into the, in the waters down at the, you know, uh, the Cape, but or at uh, in, uh, Cape Town, South Africa, around that area. Goes in the water, uh, and actually interacts no with no cage and interacts with great white sharks, which is just truly insane. Is and, that on the and then especially, he's actually hanging onto a dorsal fin for for like seventy-five yards as it just pulls into the water. I mean, it, is, it was truly the most myth-dispelling thing I've ever seen in my life. It takes a little bit of the wind out of Oliver Reed's cock, for me. Yeah. In terms this, of what's more what's impressive. What's brave, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. not when you consider that the marks on his penis were left by an actual eagle. I see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll reach down there. Yeah, that's how those got there. Wait a second, don't move. Yeah. Someone draw this. <laughs> Before the eagle gets off my car. That's right. You know, we went to a restaurant in South Africa one night, a few mm -hmm. weeks later. Eartha Kitt's there, Herbert Lom, everybody was sitting at the table. Real nice restaurant. And he got up and he whipped his dick out in the restaurant. So, And I so, remember feeling, I thought it was special. I thought, but I guess he'll just show it to anybody. <laughs> so, I'm no big deal. <laughs> but he did give me his meerschaum pipe. At the end. Did he really? Yeah. All kind of old and yellow, which means you smoked a lot out of it. And where is that pipe now? It's uh, it's uh, at home in my little special little box. It's got keepsake items in it. Yeah. Eartha Kitt's uh, lingerie. Uh huh. <laughs> Eartha Kitt's panties. <laughs> Why are you gonna let your yeah. son be in a shark tank uh, cage? That is fucking awesome. <laughs> He's excited beyond belief. Needless to say. Yeah. Because yeah, well, yeah. I'm guessing when he suggested it to you yeah. as a birthday present, mm -hmm. somewhere in the back of his mind, he's thinking, "There's no way this is gonna happen." No, because we talked about it before, so I think he knew that... Uh, He's a big fan of the Shark Week. Yes. Right? Shark Week's awesome. <laughs> you're, you're not? Come on, Kevin. You're a shark. We guy. have all the DVDs. Somebody gifted us the Shark yeah. Week DVDs. Well, the 19-year-old gets to go in the shark cage? What are we talking about? <sighs> yeah. Sammy, you remember your 19th? I do. I remember when my dad took my training wheels away, and mm. he just threw me into the water with no cage <laughs> and the sharks. Same thing? You gotta think pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta think pretty fast. You're thinking these, are, these are not real legs. I went on a shark dive with my dad uh, when I first got certified, scuba cert certified, about 24 years old. We go down to Australia, I go out at Cairns, we go out to the Great Barrier Reef, about 20 miles out. And uh, we go down and we feed these little black tip reef sharks. They're not that big. They're maybe like four feet long. And, uh, but after we ran out of food, then you swim off together, right? My dad's my dive buddy. And uh, I lose him. And I know as a newly certified diver that you, you then you go to the surface. So I go to the surface, and the weather had uh, changed a little bit. It had gotten overcast, and it was, there was a mist. It was in, and so I'm on the surface. I know I'm 20 miles out. And I, I turn around 360 degrees, and I can't see a boat. And it was just the ickiest feeling. Icky, interesting word, would not have chosen it. Yeah, well, just all of a sudden, all of that, uh, you know, uh, mercy of the sea, and yes. how fast things can change a reality. It's like, oh, this is that, this is when you're like, how the fuck did that happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> And so um, uh, I, I start, um, I'm like, well, I can inflate my BC. The water's 80 degrees. That's, Whitey doesn't swim around here. I know he swims in this, you know, you put all this shit together in your head, like, how long am I going to be out here? What's, uh, you know, going on? Not thinking that if you drift off the reef, that's when you shark bait, because then everything's up there. Um, but um, you can't see the boat. That's yeah, I can't see the boat. Um, really, I guess, as is, is quick as we've been down for about 25 minutes, um, uh, and I blew a whistle, and I heard some voices out there, somebody yell, and then uh, all of a sudden, too, it started getting a little clearer out there, and I saw the boat, and I was a couple few hundred yards off, and I swam back. But it was a real, real uncomfortable you know, few moments there. Needless to say. 
But it was the same boat that that movie about the two divers who uh, got left behind, uh, open water, Whoa. was made about. It happened on that. It was Quicksilver out of Cairns. I guess they didn't, hadn't done the uh, fin count properly, and that's why they left those two divers, right. I guess, out there. And um, I remember reading about the story in the newspaper like years years later. I called my dad. I said, "Hey, they left two divers." You know, same boat. On the same boat, yeah. Out there. And uh, and uh, but that's a scary story. You and your dad going out there to do a little uh, swimming, mm -hmm. as it were. Made me think that perhaps you were um, Sean Connery and Harrison Ford, Last Crusade. Did these kind of trips you and your dad took just for shits and giggles. Yeah, we didn't. Um, we didn't take a whole lot of trips, but we took. There were a few. The, one of the other ones I remember was he took me up into uh, the Sierras, which is really cool. We packed up there with um, some like pack mules, took our stuff up there, and we set up camp. Again, Last Crusade stuff. Mm -hmm. My dad said, you want to go to the Pronto Pub for some French toast? And I said, sure. Well, these were, uh, um, my dad was pretty, yeah, he, he took us out. You know, That's he, extraordinary. Yeah. yeah, that was a neat trip, yeah. I mean, you're in Huntington Beach. Yeah. There are opportunities. You yeah. could go to Catalina. Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah. Let's go to Australia. Yeah. Off the barrier. Yeah. Well, he was going with uh, some of his doctor uh, buddies. Right. And, uh, and uh, he said, uh, if you get certified, you can come along. So um, that was cool. The Sierra trip, we were up there for seven days, and the Sierras didn't see uh, hide nor hair of anybody for, for days, like five days, until the sixth day. And we were fishing on this beautiful little lake and catching golden trout. We're having lunch on one side of the lake, and my dad says, you want to go back to the camp and uh, grab uh, the mustard or something? And I go, sure. And it's probably about half a mile to, the, to our camp. And I'm walking, and all of a sudden I come across two amazing, beautiful, totally naked women. Wait a second. Seriously? Yeah. How old are you? Yeah. I'm like 16 years old. Oh, man. I mean, this is fantasy time. This is Dear Penthouse. Is it? Yeah. There's a, there's a Doberman or two there, and there's some guy over there with a the camera. So I guess they're doing some kind of photo shoot or whatever. Sure. I go back, I get the stuff, and I spy a little bit, too, as I come back. And, um, and then... Uh, we need something else. And Dad goes, can you go back to the camp again? Sure. And I'm like, I'm going to get busted if I don't tell him. So I go, um, there's some naked women over there. And, uh, what? I go, yeah, they're naked women. So I guess I should go the other way or something. And he goes, no, 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 public. Public place. You if they want to be out there shooting something. I'm like, really? Cool. So I went back and <laughs> took another peek again. I must have looked like the, the littlest perv. <laughs> they wrote a book about me. The name of your third perv. book. Yeah. Uh, did they ever catch on the fact that you were there? Did you say the crazy thing hello? Is, no, they didn't. They didn't say anything. But I remember being in a tent that night, and I'm like, you know, I'm thinking about these women, and I'm like, I can't really knock one off with my dad right, <laughs> right there, <laughs> literally inches away. Well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, wow, that's uh, pretty damn phenomenal, sir. Now it's starting to make sense to me why you might want to pay it forward by putting your uh, son in, in a pretty uh, admirable adventure. Um, we have a um, question from the Twitterverse. You're on the, uh, on the Twitter. We, uh, we were tweeting it up earlier today, as a matter of fact. You were kind enough to mention uh, you were on your way to see us. Um, and then I want to ask you how you're enjoying the Twitter. This question comes to you uh, live from our Twitter audience, at Lons, friend of the show, friend of the family. Uh, loved at Patty Warbucks, that would be your Twitter name, on, uh, on the news radio. Would love to hear about the uh, challenges of stepping into a long-running ensemble show. Mm. Well, that was interesting because Phil Hartman, you know, had just died the year before in uh, horrible, horrible circumstances. And they're bringing in Lovitz already to replace him. Yes. So that's weird. Yeah. Which made it uh, um, a, a, a little bit, you know, because he was already there and a little bit easier to kind of Move in and and uh, just you know have some fun. I love the show and yeah. and uh, and I love Phil. Phil always made me laugh and and I love the character that I got to do. And it was a lot of fun. Had a lot of fun, but it was there was a weird sort of weird energy. The way that yeah. you know they they all were dealing with it. Yeah, and that was a very difficult phase for the show. Yeah, and all the cast. Yeah. Uh, your character uh, has something to do with Stephen Root's world. His character. No? Yes, I was the evil Johnny Johnson. Right. 
We had Stephen here. He's fantastic. Yeah, he's great. Huge fans. Yeah. What an amazing talent. Yeah. Um, so your memory yeah. of the show is that there was sort of just an awkward air. There was an awkward air. And, uh, and then there's also and then there's Andy Dick. I mean, you put it all together, it just gets more awkward. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, how long have you been on the Twitter, the tweet, as it were? Well, I guess a little uh, over a year. Everybody on the cast just, you know, did it, and so I'm not. I get I get spanked a lot for not tweeting, you know. You don't tweet enough. I don't tweet enough. Because you have something called um, what is it? Life. You have a life. Yes, thank you, Kevin. And you, I don't sense you're a narcissist, <laughs> which it helps to be on Twitter as a so-called. It would, right? I'm looking at some of these, like some of these folks who have been on for you know a year or two, and they've tweeted like. 8,000 times. 24,000. I just was reading someone who had 24,000 tweets, and I thought, that seems like a lot. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing nothing else, just tweeting? That's all that's happening? Um, yes. Uh, so the, the, the Twitter, uh, it's fun every now and then. But you yeah. got, you got uh, peer pressured from the folks at work? Uh, yeah, I guess. That's my excuse. Can I say, after playing, first meeting Oliver Hudson at mm -hmm. a poker table, mm -hmm. um, and uh, knowing the lineage, of course. Yes. Uh, knowing his folks a little bit. Still utterly shocked when uh, he became uh, funny on the TV mm -hmm. show with you. Because mm -hmm. they're on the poker table, sweet, engaging. Mm -hmm. Comedian? No. Yeah. I'm not getting a comedian vibe yeah. from, from the Ollie Hudson. Yeah. Uh, what is your experience like working with him? Uh, I love Ollie. Um, yeah. Well, um, there's no way not to love him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. He, he's such a good guy, um, and uh, for a Silver Spoon especially, one who grew up with a, a life of privilege, he's just a, a, a real decent human being, uh, above and beyond being incredibly charming and charismatic, and, right. and uh, the, just a sick, sick golfer. I was playing golf with him, a little golf with him that earlier today, and, uh, and he came out to the desert because we had a, a charity event, a right. fundraiser thing, and he came out, he's, he's come out to support the last couple of years. And, his game is so good. Um, uh, you know, he was just in a member guest tournament, uh, you know, out in Utah. And I know, uh, he, he beat Freddie Couples in a playoff, what? a three-hole playoff. Yeah, they both went birdie. Then, I think Golly went birdie. He he, uh, his first year at the Bob Hope, he shot a 67 Jesus. that first day. Jesus. Yeah. And I love to remind him that the first time we went out and played golf about five years ago with the Doug Robinson, our producer, was at Mountain Gate, Ollie's course. You know, he, hadn't been, he wasn't really playing golf at that time. I was still my miserable 18 handicap self, and I actually took skin money from him and from Doug. Oh, you can't let him forget that. I can't let him forget it. Ever. I can't, ever. And he just spent the next couple of years, it must have really, really got to him. <laughs> Clearly. I'm thinking. You were his inspiration. Yeah, and became I'm gonna bury the you. very best, just, a, just, a, just an incredible... Golfer. Do you know who's rated the number one celebrity uh, show business person who's a golfer? Um, who would that be? Kenny G. Oh, no. Yeah. Kenny can't can't beat Oliver. Kenny is literally rated. I know. I know. I know. He plays. Kenny plays. He's scratched. Six holes a day. He's scratched, and have. he's rated as yeah. the number one celebrity player. And you're saying Ollie is pretty much scratched too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sixty-seven. That's fucking yeah. sick. No, Kenny can't beat all over. There it is. Right there. The gauntlet's been laid down. Yeah. yeah. I say we set up a match. Yeah. Um, ASAP. Sammy, can you get on that? I can. You know, I can. You know, they never talk about the best celebrity. Um, uh, what's the? Uh, wow, I just said not shuffleboard. Uh, curling. <laughs> That's what it is. They never talk about the best celebrity curler. I wonder if there's mm. a reason they don't. I'm going to tell you who it is. Reginald Bell Johnson. Reginald. Bell Johnson. Bell Johnson. Reggie. <laughs> I'll tell you why that doesn't surprise me. Um, it's, just, it's the form. Yeah. He's got the body he does. form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, all right, let's, uh, we're, we're jumping around a little bit. Uh, uh, so, it, Ollie's just become the superstar. I can't get over this on, on, on the golf course. Just, he's the one to beat. Yeah. Can't touch him. Yeah. Uh, Doug Robinson also. Uh, have you played poker with him? Yes, I have. Yes. And uh, cash game or tournament? Cash game. And did you play over at the game at the uh, um, the uh, the or uh, Hank Azaria yeah. and all the guys? That, that, yeah. And uh, our friends from the NFL Network. Yeah. 
Uh huh. Yeah. The Rich, Rich Eisen, Eisen has Rich been Eisen, here as yeah. well. Yeah, we talked about. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, it's been a couple of years since I, I went over there, but you know, it's a thousand bucks to buy into that game. Then you could lose subsequent thousand dollars if you. And for a television star, this is a problem. I have four kids to put through <laughs> college. I'm not going to keep. I'm not going to. I'm listen, not going to prescribe to that. Kevin, our show, I haven't been able to renegotiate. <laughs> oh. uh, you guys shoot uh, live in front of an audience mm -hmm. uh, Friday nights or Tuesday nights? Tuesday nights. Damn it! Yeah. My home game is Tuesday nights. We're mm -hmm. never going to have you at the home game. Well, they don't shoot well, every Tuesday. They don't shoot every week. Every no, fourth no. week, don't you guys yeah, get a break? Yeah, every fourth week, yeah. All right, break, yeah. we're going to talk about this yeah. off the air. All right. We're at it. Yeah, put that down. Um, Tuesday. Uh, how great fun for you, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um to be doing the live audience thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've done it many times throughout your career. Of course, you talked about Seinfeld and before that and Dave's World. Uh, and you did a bunch of guest star stuff before that. But now, four years, five years on the rules? This is our sixth season. How fantastic. It's yeah. the great, I've talked about it before on this show. Mm -hmm. And now you can back me up, hopefully, breaking it down for us. I want to hear what your week is like. Because I've argued, if you can get it, it's simply the greatest job in show business. Hank Azaria would argue, as might yourself, that the voiceover now might be the greatest job. Well, in terms of showing making... up in your pajamas, yeah. you can do it from any phone in the world, yeah. you no longer even have to be in a studio. Well, and Hank gets, you know. Well, then there's that. Then <laughs> there's that part. $400,000 an episode for one hour yeah, of the work? Yeah. Just a small fortune every yeah. week. Yeah. They had to I've take a 30% pay cut, by the oh, way, in the yeah. recent negotiation. Well. I think we all read about that. We're this. all tightening our belts yeah. these days. <laughs> he had to get, put, put a sign the, <laughs> at the bottom of the property saying, Drifters, welcome. Um, but the, but yeah. the, but the four-camera show, yeah. uh, let's walk through the schedule. So we talked about Tuesday as a shoot yeah. day. So Wednesday, you'll come in for the table read? One hour. Right, one hour. Yep. Have a nice day. Yep. Okay. One hour, and also the table read is like 11 a.m.? Noon? Yeah, 11.15, we're usually out there before noon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's Wednesday. Yeah. Whew. You can go to the golf course. Yeah. Uh, Thursday, we're going to need you to come in for three hours, I think, four maybe? Yeah. And your call time is 10.30? It's four, Kevin. It is four hours. Mm -hmm. Your call time is 10 or 10.30? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? Usually out by 2. Okay. 1 o'clock run through. And, and uh, Tuesday, uh, or rather, that's Thursday. That's Thursday. There's a run through at the end of the day for the... Run through at the end of the day for the studio. Comes Just Friday, yeah. Same day, Same just the run through is Studio Network. 10 to 2, yep. Network Notes. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's for the writers. Yep. You're finished with the run through, you go. Yep. All right, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. leading up to the weekend, you've got uh, one hour, four hour, four hour. You're done by 2 o'clock, the latest, mm -hmm. 2.30, if you're really pushing it. We're running late today, fellas, sorry. Uh, that's, that's your Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Saturday, Sunday off. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and then you come back Monday for the camera blocking, the one true work day, yeah. as it's known. It's arduous. Yes. Oh, my goodness. We also pre-shoot stuff. Oh, do you yeah, pre-shooting pre -shoot on Monday as well? Yeah, so we don't make that audience sit there for eight hours the next day. Nice. Did you do that the first season as well? Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. So do you still do two run-throughs on Tuesday or just one? Oh. Just on. In terms of front of the live audience. Oh, no, just shoot once in front of the live audience. That's the pre yeah. the pre-shoots. The pre take care of that old. The pre we we pre-shoot some of the scenes. Right. Just some of the scenes. Get them out of the way. Yeah, get them out of the way, and then uh, you know we say the best scenes, the ones that make sense to shoot in front of the audience for Tuesday night. The ones technically that are most entertaining. Yes. Perhaps. Yes. The ones where you'll need the laughs. Yes. Uh, and so then the camera blocking day, that crazy, annoying, difficult, hellish day, is still only about eight hours tops, right? Uh, yeah. Ten to six, nine to nine yeah. to five. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere yeah. in there. Oh, brutal. How do, you, how do you stay standing? And then your shoot day starts. Tuesday, you're live in front of the audience. Mm -hmm. Come in around. Noon. <laughs> Noon on Tuesday, and uh -huh. then uh, we'll... We'll uh, get you out by 9. We'll run, yeah, we'll run through all the scenes. We usually are out by 9, and, or usually drink it by 9.30. Let's, um, not, let's not forget the delicious catered meal. Yes. Please, big dinner break. Big dinner break on show night. We, we, eat, the, we do eat well. So. That explains all the belching during the actual live day. Yeah, well, yeah. listen... We, 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 uh, we chow down pretty good. Uh, it's usually pretty decent catering, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we can, we'll go in and we'll do, we'll rehearse for uh, the scenes for maybe two hours, and then you pretty much have a few hours off. And then go get our hair and makeup and eat, mm -hmm. and then do the show at 6 p.m. for the audience. Prying the 22-year-olds off of Spade at one point uh, during the shoot day. That, that you and Ollie have to pitch in for that, I'm guessing. Um, 
it's remarkable, but yeah. Now I know in Spade's head, he's the Hugh Hefner of comedy. Yeah. Um, how close to reality? Uh, I don't know if he's putting the legend out there as much as people are supporting it. Um, well, I say that we love the Spade. It's, it's we'll go back, yeah, we, that, we'll, we'll go way back. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, I think it's all true. <laughs> I think it's all true. You sense it. Yeah, I sense it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, he, he's, he's wickedly smart mm. and funny and charming. So, and... But 5'2 is a problem. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you, you, you know, women aren't just, I guess, just, you know, attracted to, you know, uh, you, know the, you know, the model types or whatnot. He's not a bad-looking guy. He's, you know what I'm saying? He's... he's he, you know, it's but it's but but I think everybody is is a little stunned that I mean when you look at the list of the hotties that you know, the ass he's tapped. You know, my wife's right over there. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's the name. Hello, of your, darling. That's the name of your fourth book, isn't it? Yeah, the ass no. he's tapped. Yeah. <laughs> God forbid I should ever say, well, it would be nice maybe just for a month to have his life. You know, how dare you? No, no, no. Look, any. Right. Red blooded America. Grass you know, is always right? greener, sir. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, all I know is I have the most beautiful wife in the world, and she's the best mother to my children. And four extraordinary children. I don't want to get beat up again. I mean, she took me down last night. Is that what you kids are calling it? I had a few oh, drinks. drinking. Sorry. Well, I had a few drinks, and then I tried to pants her. <laughs> all and right. She, and she knocked me to the ground. This was at a party, too. In front of people took in you down. In front of people took me down, yeah. We're all very comfortable, right? Two point so takedown. Yeah. I think, uh, and I was thinking, did I hit rock bottom? Is that rock bottom right there? <laughs> when your wife takes you when down. When your wife takes you down. S same thing happened to uh, Liza Minnelli and David Guest. By yeah. the way. That's how that went down. I oh see. my God. That's how he discovered he was. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> we have so much in common. <laughs> um, you, should, you kids you should text been, him after. You I have a number. <laughs> you kids just celebrated your 20th anniversary, though. Or, yes. or, or yeah. yeah. 1991. Yeah. 20 years. Uh, that, you know, I looked it up. That's the Hollywood record, by the way. It's pr it, it does translate to, what, 55 mm -hmm. That's got 55 and, in uh, uh, Hollywood years. Yeah. Uh, when did you realize that you were a, a Disney geek? At what age did that become clear? Growing up in the Huntington Beach area, yeah. you've got access to the happiest place on Earth. Well, I, I was I was such a, just a just a little geek across the board, except the, without the brains. You know, I mean, I was ninety five pounds freshman year in high I'll school, say. Coke bottle glasses, and I was getting all C's. You would think that maybe I would have, you know, the grades would have come with all that. No, no, I, I had nowhere to go, nowhere to go. I mean, really, I had no life, mm -hmm. and and just the fantasy world is all all I had. Um, I remember sitting there on a. Uh, uh, on the brick wall eating my lunch, and one, one kid's talking to his buddy, he goes, I'm the smallest kid in this whole school. What a drag. He's like, what do you weigh? What, what, what you weigh? 105 pounds. And I'm like, eat my sandwich. Like, I weighed myself yesterday. I was 95 pounds. Um, uh, I grew up in Huntington Beach near Disneyland. and uh, 27 minutes. To go. 27 yeah. minutes, Tom. That's it, right? Yeah. And uh, I've always felt that it's such a special place, more than uh, obviously a, a theme park and a, a studio, and, and that the, even though Walt's been long gone, that I just feel like uh, the spirit of Walt Disney is there. It's an amazing, amazing place. I yeah. the kids. It's just got such a great vibe. We took all the kids to a Disney World for a week with my mom and dad, and my sister, brother, and their five kids were there. Oh, and my. The busiest week of the year is between Christmas and New Year's. Wall to wall people in Disney World, wall to wall. I was constant, you know, trying to find them. lost kids and this and that. It was insane. But I, I just remember loving it because we were all together and we all had so much fun and yeah. it was just a great, great, great memory. Where do you stay? Which, uh, which resort when you're at it's the Disney the, World? I forget. It's the one with all the wild animals out there. Uh, Animal Kingdom Lodge. Animal Kingdom Lodge, yeah. Well, didn't we? Should have been. I should have remembered that. <laughs> Literally, the one well, it's with like the a lodge. A lot of animals there. <laughs> and I uh, felt kingly. It. Yes. Um, didn't we go once between Christmas and New Year's when we were looking into uh, me doing the Christmas thing? We a great time to. Oh, I shouldn't say this. <laughs> Allowed a great time to go is the first week of December because 
um, you still get all the holiday stuff, but everyone from Thanksgiving is gone, and then the Christmas people haven't yet come. So like the first two weeks in December are a great time. And you say I shouldn't say this because you actually don't want anyone to know these secrets. Yes. yes. I guess those used to be the two best way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> used to be. Yeah. Well, we had a good thing once. Yes. yes. What's the Christmas thing called that we saw um, Neil Patrick Harris do? Uh, the candlelight procession. Candlelight. At, uh, is that I've been dying to do that. I'm surprised you haven't. They have never asked me. That's horseshit. Yeah. Let's never get your me. people on the phone right now. And by the phone, I mean the blower. Um, <laughs> that's ridiculous that you should, that you haven't done that. No. Oh, no, no, yeah, that, that has to be corrected. Crunk? Crunk? I'm no, on two rides. For fuck's sake. No. Two rides. Uh, that's right. That's what I wanted to ask about when we got to the Disney section. Yes. Did you know Jay Kogan Pryor? He's the one that you say take the ears off to and soaring. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know him prior. I don't think. No. Uh, did you get a, to know him a little bit while shooting that? I mean, did you find out like he what a great writer he is and been on The Simpsons Forever and um, all that stuff. Uh, no. He probably kept that a secret. Yes. Yeah, he was just an actor that day. No, what I remember because we shot it, it was pretty quick. We got through. What I remember was meeting, meeting El Lasseter that day. He was there. Holy shit. Yeah, and he took me for a little private tour around the park. You know, oh and uh, we went to go see Bugs Life, and uh, it was really cool yeah. hanging out with the man. Yeah, it yeah, must have been. Yeah. Especially having grown up as such a fan. Yeah. And geek of the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, favorite ride? At the Disneyland. At Disneyland. Oh, I think it's always been Pirates. Mm hmm. It's such a great ride to just chill out on. I got to go Haunted Mansion. Yeah, Haunted Mansion's great too. The Tim Burton Haunted Mansion? Is there anything greater than that makeover that, that takes place annually? Uh, that's awesome, too. It's unbelievable. It is. But... However, I, you were going to say? Well, I was going to say, however, you don't get to participate in that like you do. See, I have this thing where we always fill up a boat with half our family and whoever else in there. And as we're going by that restaurant, I love to, in a pirate voice, yell out, I recommend the veer. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have that at Haunted Mansion. No. I mean, you can yell it out to the dining scene. Yes. But none of the ghosts are going to reply. Not, but it's gonna... always a big crowd pleaser. Yeah. You'll be happy <laughs> to know. Everyone loves it. You'll be happy to know that they're it's redoing that restaurant. Yes. Are they? Which is oh, why it's been Pirates... a refurbishment for like five weeks. It's driving me crazy. It doesn't open up till like November 23rd. Pirates has been closed down. For... I, well, I'm bad. Yeah, like if you ever need any information, you can just turn it out to me. I know it's all in here. Yeah. No, I warned him that you were going to geek <laughs> yeah. out a little bit on the Disney at some point. Thank God it's finally happened. Snow White there on your computer. So growing up as that Disney geek, when you get the chance to do the Emperor's Groove yeah. or a New Groove, yeah, uh, how exciting is that? Uh, yeah, working on a Disney movie. Yeah, was, I mean honestly, that was really, yeah. That was, was that the a, first? Uh, that was the first one. Yeah. Disney movie. Yeah, I was. Uh, no, that was a. Uh, wow, I can't believe I'm working on a, a Disney animated picture because just having grown up and seeing seeing every single one of them, you know. Um. Um, it was just a great opportunity. I met Sting at a couple of things afterwards, um, and uh, I, I sort of got the impression that he he really wasn't pleased at the, at the turn that that movie took. That movie wasn't really supposed to be comedy at first. It was mm -hmm. supposed to be called Kingdom of the Sun, something entirely different. They even shot a documentary about it. Wow. Um, Trudy did, his wife did. And, uh, and did I, you know this, Jamie? There's a documentary about the... Uh the making of the dramatic version. What was it called originally? Something, uh, Kingdom of the Sun, or I believe that's what it was called. And um, I think the documentary might be called Sweat House, but it it. Because um, she was, they were unpleased. They're displeased. Yeah, yeah, because then what happened was it became a comedy, and then so much of the music didn't end up being being a part of it. It was no longer a Lion King with all the music throughout. Now it's uh, as you know, uh, it's just comedy. Mm. They weren't pleased. I don't think so. And the, well, you but, said you ran into him. Was this discussed? Um, briefly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Briefly. You don't want to dwell no. on it. No. Well, too. I mean, I was, it, it, but I mean, I would, I, I, I would have been a part of that whole, you know, uh, anything that went wrong with that movie for him. You know what I'm saying? Because then they brought in Kronk and Isma, and they made it funny, and then that was it. Once again, you were the cause of other people's creative dismay. <laughs> okay, you're right. Let's switch gears. Uh, uh, what was your favorite uh, Disney movie coming up then? Growing up, you must uh, have had a favorite. Um, I loved all of them. I used to love Sebastian Cabot's narration, like in the 
Jungle Book. Sword of the Stone, you know. He just oh, had such a. He's in the Jungle Book, too. Voice. Jungle Book? Yeah. Sebastian Cabot was um, the gear on in really, the Jungle Book. Really associate well. that voice, yeah, with Disney. With Disney films. I always think of um, Phil Harris. I always uh, mm. associate Disney with. He was Baloo and Little right. John and Thomas O'Malley and the Aristocats. I always think. Right. Phil Harris. Nice. Um, she's good. She, oh, yeah. She's right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she can prove her shit at any point. Yeah. We do another thing on the show uh, that is a rapid fire five questions. It's called a tweet five. Q T five. T five. That crazy. T five forever now. Uh, if you ever had the pleasure working with that lunatic, he's one of the funniest fuckers alive, and a silly, silly bastard. Uh, he sings the tweet five because yes. this come to us from the Twitter. Uh, oh, these questions are uh, five rapid fire, this or that, Coke or Pepsi, no correct answer type of questions. But they're specifically designed for you. All right, let's get this wrong. By the viewer. There's no wrong answer, sir. This one at. I'll find the wrong answer. Desenzo. Mm -hmm. Face paint or Chinese food? Chinese food. Spade or Arquette? Spade. Tom Hanks, Andy Dick? Hanks. Wendy. Who would say yeah, it? Who would say it? <laughs> Honestly, those two choices. Hitler might go Andy Dick. Uh, hey, Patty. Wendy. Hey, Patrick. Wow, that's an amazing impression. Wow. Jesus, that was uncanny. It was eerie. <laughs> that really was. <laughs> I've worked with them on like five different things. Yeah. Uh, strangest question he ever asked you? Uh... I don't remember. They're all strange. They're all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He almost peed on me one time. <laughs> Tell us more. Well, we were doing this thing. Uh, I, we, we, I was doing this film, and, um, and we, we brought him on to play the, uh, the uh, cult leader. The cult leader had to be both funny and creepy. And we're like, well, Andy does fit the bill. Um, and he was, uh, he was a little drunk. Am I, am I adding him? This no, is, no. It's the guy who's on Subway Rehab. Uh, and uh, he stood out of his trailer door and okay. there, and he starts peeing, and I literally had to duck to get out of the Much way. like Oliver Reed, all these people just insist on you... Seeing their dick in one form or another. <laughs> Tweet five, number four, Wendy's or Arby's? Arby's. Men in Black or Star Tours? Men in Black or Star Tours? I'm, it's supposed to be a, a rapid-fire answer, I understand, but <laughs> men, are men in Black or Star Tours? You can break these it down. Two, these are two different... time with it. You can break it down. Men in Black Tours. <laughs> <laughs> now, wouldn't that be great? Men in Black Tours, tours you walk around yes. the place. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a Men in Black attraction at Universal in Florida, in Orlando. Any good? No. I don't know. I've never been. I just know it's... I don't, I don't step outside of Disney property when I go to Orlando. Hell no. No. I do not. <laughs> Sorry. Um, tell us... Uh, I'm going to tease the effing with tonight uh, at thecrackle.com one more time, but first, I'm afraid... You're sitting home one night with the missus. Yes. What you're doing is none of my business. But every Thursday, the two of you are making a, a, an appointment with NBC to watch the Seinfeld during its initial yeah. run. Uh, and according to the dossier, at one point you actually think, you see, this is the kind of show I need to be doing. Yeah. A couple weeks later, a call comes in from the agent. There's a guest star spot. You're going to yeah. go audition for Larry and yeah. Jerry. Yeah. What are you thinking? What's going through the, um, the old uh, bean? Yeah, well, I was very excited and uh, nervous. But, um, yeah, I was sitting on the couch. I remember distinctly sitting on the couch, you know, and right after, you know, Richards had just slid into the door or something. I don't know. It's always so much fun to watch. Yeah. So cl so clever. Why can't, I, why can't I get on a show like this? Why? We've been watching it for years. And then I had an audition, uh, literally a week and a half, two weeks later. Yeah, go on. So, uh, but... Uh, yeah, it's just to be Jerry's mechanic, and uh, I remember thinking, because uh, they're like a lot of Tonys, Vinnies, you know, New York guys in there, and I thought I have to do something different because I don't really fit that bill. Right. And that's why I made him uh, sort of uh, lame. I don't know, a little, <laughs> little off balance. Um, there's something. Uh, there, you know, there's something sort of off center about that guy. Right. And he was right there in the room in the first audition. Or yeah, Larry David was in there, and uh, and uh, Jerry was in there, and they both laughed, and that was really cool. You had created the personality yeah. 
there's only so much on the page, mm -hmm. and the personality you end up por uh, portraying in the show, did you actually bring that yeah. into the audition from the beginning? Was that, or did it evolve a bit? Oh no, I, I just, uh, you know, because he, he would he would just say stuff like, you know, Jerry would say, look, you don't, you don't even do. They're talking about the sex move or whatnot now. David's studying Elaine and. He's using the same move, and so Jerry would say things like, "You know, you don't even use the twist of the swirl, this or that." And you know, and and, um, and you know, and uh, Putty would say, uh, "Well, yeah, that's right." And I just decided to make it like, "Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right." <laughs> you know, or, and I just made him kind of weird and came up with a like did, a voice for him. I guess. Did you draw from any character did, in the past? Or yeah. Like, or was it thin, thin blue? There are a couple of guys on the wrestling team that I think. Uh, <laughs> Weren't all there? Yeah. Um, God, good friends, loyal to a junkyard dog, but just <laughs> what the hell? Um, like a dog. Yeah. Uh huh. So we'll I think maybe die. pulled you know, something from there. The like, high five move? How did that, uh... that? That was all scripted, yeah. Right, but I don't think the way that you ultimately yeah. offered it up. High five on the flip side. <laughs> just so that was where the word lame really made sense. Yeah. I always wondered where. This is why I think Larry David doesn't like me now. Just that. Want to hear a little story? Mm, yes, please. So we do. So we do a ski thing at at uh, at uh, Deer Valley every year. It's a CBS thing, and everybody goes up there. And they always. And then we have these celebrity ski races. It's for charity, and then they televise these races on a Saturday morning that 50 people will watch, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they always want to infuse it with some comedy. So, sure. So they got this thing that they want to, this time Larry gets a crappy gift bag and we all get a good gift bag. And I'm like thinking, well, so we're going to just beat this dumb joke over the head. Like it'll be the same thing. So I sit next to Larry and uh, I haven't spoken to him since. Uh, it was a couple of years ago. Interesting. Yeah. And so I sit next to Larry. I know, I know he's a little bit of a control freak and a curmudgeon. Right, Larry? I'm like, I'm, you know, yeah, a lovable one, but yes. Uh, but I'm still going to throw this idea out because we have to do it now. I agreed to do it because I go, well, Flurry does it. I'm sure, we'll do it. Right. So I go, so I uh, agreed to do this sketch. And he goes, oh, well, I felt bad. And I go, all right. Well, listen, let's do something different. How about I'll go, oh, hey, Larry. You know, when he comes to see my gift bag, and he's, I'll go, hey, how'd that big Seinfeld reunion go? I'll go, oh, I guess it wasn't that big. Not everybody was invited. It's not a curve moment. But he doesn't say he wants to do it or not. And so like three hours later, uh -oh. we're shooting this, right? And he comes in and he's like, what do you got in the bag? And uh, <laughs> I do a horrible Larry impression. <laughs> and, I, I, and I go, hey, how'd that big Seinfeld reunion go? And, uh, and he, he, he just doesn't, he won't respond. He, will, he doesn't want to play along. And so then, so then uh, wow. he does it again. I was just a total dick because then I did it again. <laughs> and then I did it a third time. Genius. You can't let it go. He couldn't let it go. No. And he looks up at me and goes, well, well, there wasn't room for everybody. I go, mind you that we're, be we're being filmed, this whole thing. I go, well, you had room for that red-headed, freckle-faced uh, idiot Banya. He's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, uh, he goes, well, people like Banya. I go, people like Banya. <laughs> That's why he's looking at me, and I think he's pleased. And uh, I go, I go, well, it's no big deal. I'm, I'm doing a show with Spade. I go, I go, he was on your show, wasn't he? He goes, yeah. I go, whatever. <laughs> and I go, how about I give you my bag and I get to be on your dumb show? <laughs> this is great. Time. Yeah, and I get to be on your dumb show. And then, you know, and then I leave. And then he goes, he goes, uh, hey, he goes can you give me another exit? And I go, sh I go, yeah, sure. So I give him another exit and he yells up the stairs. He goes, because you can't improvise. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, um, but I totally pushed the issue, and which was probably dickish, but I thought it was funnier it than, is. than the other thing, right? Yeah. Whatever. They didn't air it, so. The fun thing is, is that you got to shoot it. Got to shoot it. You got to seemingly improvise all of it. And, uh, and he hasn't spoken to you since. No, it's not like we talk. It, 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 we're not, we don't hang out. Right. You know? I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm a fan of him. I mean, he's a genius. And There's a chance you weren't going to speak during this period anyway. Right. The fact that you may have alienated him as a way to say so long. I may never run into Larry ever again. I have a feeling I probably will. Again, we have Larry on Skype. Let's go to this now, Larry. Please. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But I know I, I love Larry. He is a genius, but I... I uh, but how fun to fuck with him. I, I, Come on. Yeah. That's not an opportunity yeah. that comes down the pike. No. No. It's pretty great. Yeah. I have to tip my hat, sir. I, I think that's pretty fantastic.
because uh, he's a master. Man. He's a master uh, of his own universe, yeah. and I don't imagine there's a lot of people fucking with him. Yeah. Jeff Garland clearly has uh, carte blanche. Yeah. He gets to pretty much do whatever he wants. Yeah. But, uh, and um, the guy that plays um, Long Ball Larry. Oh, J.B. Smooth. Yeah, he gets to fuck with him. Yeah. But I'm not sure anybody yeah. else is really fucking with Larry. So I think that's pretty fantastic. I say kudos. Richard Lewis. Thank you. Richard kudos. Lewis. I don't. Uh, I don't necessarily buy Richard's commitment and conviction to fuck with Larry. I think he loves him too much still. So he doesn't actually... Uh... Let me take a call, and then I'll be right back. <laughs> Very well. We'll get back to this. Um... Oh, look at this. We got a Facebook tweet five, since you enjoy the other one so much. Tweet five. Thank you, Tweet five. Dave Keckner. Tweet five forever now. Apparently, I, I must have yelled at someone on the... On the production staff saying, if I say Tweet 5 and you yes. don't play that clip, I'll rip off your head and shit down your neck. Because it beautifully pops up the moment I say it. Say it. Uh, this one from Sean Foster. Friend of the show, Shawnee! Uh, Joe Swanson or Brock Samson? Oh, I know, right? What the hell? Sophie's Choice. Um, I know I feel more comfortable doing Brock Samson. I don't feel like I'm going to hell doing Brock Samson. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, acting or voice acting, not even fair. Still acting, probably. Man fur, eight ball jacket. Man fur. Face paint, no face paint. No face paint. Cronk, Buzz Lightyear. You gotta love Cronk. Come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> what are we talking about? Squeakity squeak, squeakums. Cronk <laughs> is mine. I, I wasn't like filling in somebody's shoes for the Buzz Lightyear. You know, I'm not. I wasn't. I was. I was also the poor man's crock. Like, then the way they do the TV show, I go, I'll do that too. <laughs> even, though, even though they don't pay very much. Right. It's like scale. Like, really? Yeah, that is ridiculous. It's Disney, but you know, you kind of like don't want somebody else. Because David gets so pissed, he's, he's so perturbed that there's somebody out there voicing his Cusco character. I'm like, you could have done it. Right. You know? Yeah. Now you're used to getting making money, David, but you could have done that too. <laughs> it does annoy him, though. Yeah. Needless to yeah. say. Like, I just didn't want to have to deal with that. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Joe Swanson, since you mentioned that you may be going to hell. Um, how much fun to be that sort of whacked out, ridiculous? I mean, that character, the, the whole show, of course, yeah. Yeah. loves to push. Oh, yeah. Each and every week. Well... It is. It's fun. I. It's always been fun to be a part of. Um, uh, you know, and I have I have teenage kids. You know that love to watch it. It's fun to be able to be a part of that and watch it. Watch it with them. Yeah. Um, you get. You let the nineteen-year-old obviously. Next one in line gets to watch as well. Seventeen and now chant thirteen. I thirteen's kind of the age when I. You right. Know, when Talon, you know, when he was eleven, he wanted to watch it. When he was twelve, he wanted to watch it. At thirteen, I and. I, I still think it's too young. It's an adult show, but um, right. all of his friends in school are watching. I thought, all right, well, 13 will be the age. Right. Now, I want to ask about, since we're talking about Family Guy, there was an episode that aired a week or two ago mm -hmm. that had a little bit of controversy with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the one where Quagmire's sister is in an abusive relationship. Uh, Do you remember, you know this yeah. episode? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was quite a lot of talk about that. Oh, well, I'm... I was, I was, uh, I'm watching it with my wife, and we're in bed, and she just kept going, I don't like this. I don't think this is funny. Mm -hmm. I don't like it, but it ha you have to set up what an ass this guy is, because we're going to kill him. We're going to take him out. Yeah. But yeah, there, there was, yeah, uh, it, it was. It's, even though it's a cartoon, it's kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's like it really smacking was. the shit out of her and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's just because Seth MacFarlane is, he was such a child of like 80s sitcoms. Yeah. And back in the 80s sitcoms, they would do serious episodes. Yeah. You know, there was that episode of Different Strokes where the kid gets kidnapped. It was a whole storyline. Yeah. I believe they referred to it as a very special episode. It was, indeed, a very, a very special, special episode. episode. Oh, yeah. Film yeah. There was very special episodes of Facts of Life. Yeah. So the very like special Seth. episode of Family Guy. I was thinking about having that beer. That's right. That was it's very giggity, serious. Giggity yeah. Smack. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what's the matter, honey? You don't think this is funny? Huh? What? <laughs> Remind you of me, huh? <laughs> you domestic don't think that's funny? violence, huh? It's gonna get ugly. Uh, that's not yeah. funny either. No, no, no. Sorry, honey. <laughs> I keep forgetting she's like 15 feet away. We uh, we had Seth here. Yeah. And um, found out ahead of time that uh, he enjoys the Jack Daniels. Had a bottle waiting. I don't think he stopped drinking the whole two hours. Mm. Who keeps an eye on this sort of thing? There's Cameras. no regulations. Cameras. That's exactly. <laughs> Um, but we, could be, we could be drinking right now. <laughs> See? 
You gotta ask ahead Hair of, time. of the dog. Yeah. That would have helped. That would have helped. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Adam, our intern. Good luck. Uh, Is he even old enough to buy alcohol? Adam cannot buy alcohol. Yeah, good luck getting it in yeah. here, by the way. Were they, were they gonna oh, no, teleport yeah, no it into this room? We can move that. Uh, we can move that, he says, <laughs> rather seriously. Uh, fun for the uh, drop in the puck at the Devil's Game, I'm sure. Did they make you put on the paint? That thing turned into a, uh, I flew out there. The New Jersey Devil's been a franchise for 40 years and I never won the Stanley Cup. But then oh, on the Trinitron, they're showing, you know, the face painter screaming, yelling, and they, they, they won it. So uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, you know, you know, probably sort of become a little bit iconic in that arena there. I get to go out and they invite me to come out and drop the puck for on the opening day for the Stanley Cup champions. Just awesome moment. My brother-in-law comes up and uh, we spent 48 hours just hammered. Hammered. So come Sunday for the game, Sunday. I was so Much like up. today when you showed up here. You could barely. A little bit. Sorry. <laughs> Look at that. That's amazing what a little powder, a little powder can do. Um, and uh, so at that point, I was just, uh, you know, we've been up all night. We're like, we want to paint the D in your chest. I'm like, nah, just paint the face. But face will be fine. So that jersey on and paint the face. Um, and then I let them paint the D on my, I'm like, what the? Sure, do it. So they're, they're painting this D in. On my chest, and I got the jersey on. So after half an hour of fireworks and showing like the great moments of last season, you got twenty thousand like, screaming and crying hockey fans. They're very passionate. This is huge. Just it's it, they're having a real emotional ceremony. And then at the end, from the cast of Seinfeld, and I had done two episodes of Seinfeld. <laughs> cast of Seinfeld. I'm like I like the way that sounds. <laughs> um, you know, and then they got me screaming and yelling up there, and I'm walking out on the red carpet and to drop the puck. So I go drop the puck. They're playing Florida. And I shake Scott Stevens' hand. He's the team captain. And I shake the Florida guy's hand. And then I go back to Scott, and I go, let's do this. And he, he like, you know, almost off his skates. And um, I think the crowd liked that. Now, I turn around, and I'm walking back on the carpet, and I slide. I almost go down. And the whole crowd's like, oh. And then, and then I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, thank God. I've got a I got D. the D. <laughs> so I slowly stand up. The jersey comes off. I got the D. The place goes insane. Now I got Fred Rogan going. You know, I'm on Rogan's Heroes. Even at the end of the, at the Super Bowl, when he goes greatest of the year, we're still not sure if you know greatest save of the year. Warburton dropping the puck at the the New Jersey Devils game. Did he plan this? You know, did he really fall? Was he falling or not? You know, that is so fantastic. It just got it just got bigger than light. The whole stupid thing. And we didn't know until just now. Right. Now it's been confirmed. It's been confirmed. A yeah. happy accident. Happy accident. Thank God I was hung over just enough to say yes. You can paint my chest. Yeah. <laughs> That's really <laughs> kids. If you learn anything from today's show, yes. Let it be that uh, being a little hungover is not so bad. Being hungover saves Seth MacFarlane's life. Don't forget that. <laughs> that is damn straight. Boy, oh boy, yeah. is that true. Yeah. He told that story. Yeah. Yep. That's a pretty great one. Um, you were warned ahead of time about the Larry King game, but first, a couple more questions. Okay. So, all right, let's talk about the, uh, the effing with tonight. Uh, this is uh, a, a creation of a friend of yours. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how this came to be, sir. Jim Shaughnessy I'll is say. the creator. Uh, and uh, he's a he's a he's a, a writer. A, uh, you know, he wrote for uh, the Tonight Show for years. In relation before. to the famed drummer of the Tonight Show, Shaughnessy. I don't believe so. Hmm? He's here. No relation, right, Jim? Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe we would. Uh... Their drummer for many years was uh, Shaughnessy. Was his last name? Anyways. Well, back in the Carson days. I don't okay, believe so. Okay, so so he's a writer of the Tonight Show, and he comes to you and he says he was uh, he was abruptly fired. I guess. By, uh, by the team there. As it were. As it were. And so uh, I guess he wanted to ha have some fun with the, the, the format, the, the talk show format and animated form. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, it was uh, his creation and uh, he had uh, contacted me somehow on uh, the computer. Uh huh. And uh, we got some dialogue going. I think it was like, this is years ago. Right. It might have been Facebook. Um, and uh, then we talked about doing this, and uh, was, you know, we finally did it. You know, this last year, the year before. We talked about it for a couple of years. Yeah, we talked about it for a while. Yeah. So uh, uh, 
it's uh, it's very mean spirited. <laughs> Let's be clear. And uh, which I'm not always you know you know perfectly comfortable with. But uh, but we'll see. I mean you know it's still this is our, our first out with it you know so uh, you know uh, I think uh, the launch just began. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that there are, there are, you know there are aspects of it that work and there's some that we need to work on. But uh, I think that there's definitely some potential there to, to, for this to turn into something, you know. And people should go to crackle.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, effing with tonight is E-F-F-I-N-G. Yes. Or they can go to effingwithit.com. Ah. Effingwithit.com. It's where. very own website. Yes. yes. Um, how many episodes? You know? We were given a very low budget to do almost 30 minutes of anima animation. It's it's it's. So we, we had we had uh, we really had no funds to uh, to do do that, but uh, I mean to do the amount of work that we ended up having to do. But right. we had a great animation team that did really good work, you know. For and they were paid on the cheap. Everybody was, you know. No money you know, to produce things on no the internet. Paid, yeah. Why does that sound familiar? Mm. Give me a moment. Mm. Um, but you own all this, don't you? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, uh, let me ask you, yeah. coming from traditional media and having yes. great success in it, and now your sixth season on mm -hmm. uh, Rules of Engagement, mm -hmm. uh, was there a, did you sense a little more freedom to fuck around with uh, working on, on the interwebs with this show? Yes. Right. Definitely. Um, and... Uh, but but it's interesting when you when you're creating. I'm finding because I, I this is the first time I found myself involved in a project like this where you're creating it from the from the ground up. You're right. you know, then you see then you see when you you, you see what you did that worked. You see what you, you did that didn't. And you're like oh all right well this is what we need to do next time. This is what we need to do to, to fix this. You know what what uh, need you know needs to be. Now I think um, uh, I think it's got uh, potential. I think it's but I do think it's really, really mean-spirited, and, and so I think sometimes, um, I think our next outing with this, I would, I would want to, um, I want, might want to navigate that a little bit differently. I'm not saying take away the essence of it, mm -hmm. you know, of what, what it is, or what, what Jim wants to, you know, what Jim, because this is, this is, you know, uh, because then, I, then I'll, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, there are too many cooks in the kitchen. I do like, uh, you know, I'm gonna have input, but Jim is the writer. He's the one who created this, and I don't want to, I don't want to change it all. But um, well, maybe I, it's okay though that you have an aversion to being slightly mean spirited. Perhaps one harkened back to a hundred minutes ago when we were hmm. just starting this conversation. Hmm. Believe it or not, it's been that long, and we were talking about um, your mother. Mm -hmm. Having this opportunity to be with George C. Scott on Broadway and saying, "No, no, yeah. there's a little uh, hanky panky thing going on with the, with the character." Yeah. Maybe that uh, passed along to you, and the idea of being mean spirited, still not comfortable with it. Well, don't want to hurt other people's feelings, as it were. Uh, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think yeah. that's pretty great. Yeah. I guess is what I'm saying. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but at the same time, I'm doing it. You're doing it, and. You're you're also flexing a muscle that the idea that it's not comfortable, therefore a little scary, mm -hmm. uh, that might be also a little exciting as a performer when we step outside our comfort zone. Yeah, I think. I hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is there uh, other? Have there been other projects, or are there other projects in development that you're more involved in in terms of creatively? Because we talked beforehand a little bit before we, we went, went live yeah. about the gun for hire aspect of our lives as as yeah. performers and actors, and how sometimes it can be wholly disappointing what the final product is, yeah. and we had nothing yeah. to really say about that. Yeah. Um, I'm actually working working on right now, been, been um, trying to put something together with my son, because I think that uh, it's a, a father and son sort of going out and adventuring is actually a great idea for um, Sort of like a more wholesome type reality show, mm -hmm. um, where you show you know you got a pop and son bonding and doing doing some crazy shit. We shot a you know sizzle reel, you know this little little uh, sort of teaser where we were racing cars on a dirt track and uh, and that was really fun and uh, turned out nice. And um, I'm thinking I'm gonna bring a skeleton, create a little crew here to actually film us doing the Great White Shark thing. Yeah. Put enough 
together and uh, and uh, try to get something off, you know, uh, off the ground maybe, you know, in one of those, you know, Net G or Discovery or one of those cool cool stations, you know. Um, that'd be fun. It'd be a lot of work though. Um, I don't like doing a lot of work. I'm used to the sitcom schedule. So. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, because that allows for golf. It does. And why am I not better? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all. Look, Kevin. That's all you can say. It is all I can say. Um, I like the Jerry Cantrell. Am I pronouncing mm -hmm. that correctly? Yes, Jerry Cantrell. Uh, from the Aussies band and Allison Chains played in your backyard for your 40th birthday. What the fuck? It was really awesome. Um, uh, Jerry Cantrell and Billy Duffy from the Cult. Yeah. And uh, Chris, the bass guitar player from the Cult, he, he was there, and uh, John Crabby was singing, and uh, we had a great drummer. Uh, I I never had birthday parties. I never had them. For my 40th, it's like I, I'm gonna have a bash, uh, you know. And I thought, you know, at best, you know, because I'm such an insane Pearl Jam fan, I thought, oh, I can I get a Pearl Jam cover band? That'd be cool. <laughs> um, and uh, so what this makeup artist who worked on the show. You know, we talked, you know, the show I was working on at the time, we talked a lot about the music. She knew I was a, a fan of everything that came out of the Pacific Northwest in the early 90s, and of course the cult and, and all that. And she knew these guys and just inquired with them, said, hey, you know, I play Patrick's, and I was, it was his 40th birthday, I'm just wondering if you guys might, because they're all playing together. Their bands are down. You know, Alice was down because Lane had just died a year or two before. And uh, Ian, Ian Asbury was fronting for the doors, so the cult was down too. So it's just sort of the stars aligned. These guys are going to go out and gig a little bit, just have some fun together and just play. Nothing too serious. And uh, they hadn't played publicly yet at that point. So she inquired. They're like, oh, yeah, cool. We'll come play in his first party. Um, and next thing I know, Jerry Cantrell's pulling up my driveway. Yeah. You know, in his black Escalade. Now, I got a front. We've all got, you know, um, that, you know, dipshit friend who just doesn't know what to say when. And, uh, <laughs> like, I do enough of that myself. You know, we don't need our friends to do it. But my buddy... My buddy who just doesn't know, he, he walks up. I can't believe rock god Jerry Cantrell is in my house. And it's, it's, such, a, it's, it's such a gift, right? It's just so cool. I, I, I'm like, Jerry, yeah. thank you for being here. My buddy walks up. The first thing he says to Jerry is, he met Eddie Vedder. Oh, God. <laughs> Why? We Why? Numbskull friends. He just doesn't know. He doesn't know. He met Eddie Vedder. And Jerry just goes, uh, he just goes, uh, yeah, he's a very, very charming guy. We were roommates for two years. And I just, I looked at Mark and I go, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> go set some fucking tiki torches up. And don't show your fuck. It was really horrible. That was pretty great. But, you know, Jerry's so cool. He just, you know, he gets it. He gets it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then somebody told me, maybe it was Sammy, someone told me that you did actually get to choose the, uh, the set list for your Pearl Jam. Uh, I, was, I, I got to, to do a set list. Um, Eddie, Eddie, you know, he knows that I've been just a sick, insane stalker fan for years. So I think he knew that I'd be able to put a decent set list together. He gave me that, that, that opportunity. He goes, write a set list. How does that come up? Give me a set list. Well, this one guy, uh, Mark Smith, Smitty, I guess, is how I refer to him in the band. Uh, he comes out and grabs me. I didn't even think I was going to get to see him. I was backstage one night with my wife and some friends. And he goes, Eddie wants to know if you'll help him out with the set list. And so after I picked my jaw up off the ground, I wandered back there and uh, got to hang out with him. He's the only... He's the only artist in the world that I just, I get absolutely retarded around. I can barely talk. Um, I'm just stupid. I just, I can't, uh, um, but he, 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 he just, he blows me away. And, um, and all the work he's done in that band for years. But I, so he asked me, to, so I wrote a set list and I sent it in. I guess, uh, and I took my son Talon on his 17th birthday. Oh boy. No, no. Um, no, he was 17. On his 18th birthday, I took him to see Roger Waters, which is really awesome. When he was 17, I took him to this show. It was his first concert ever, first Pearl Jam concert ever, and it was my set list. 25 of the 32 songs, or 26 of the 32 songs were the ones that I, I picked. <laughs> it was just an awesome, awesome. As a moment. fan, as a longtime fan, yeah. as a devotee, I can't imagine uh, yeah. the sense of pride and connection yeah. to a hero. Yeah. That you must have experienced. Yeah. Holy shit. Dude. Yeah. It. Um, it. Um, 
I, I mean, I could be in a room, you know, like, I guess as, as actors, I don't know. I mean, you've worked with so many amazing actors. And, well, you're, 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 and you're an amazing actor yourself. Oh, stop. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. No, uh, huge fan, Kevin. But, uh, <laughs> but actors, actors to me, yeah. you know, are one's a better bullshit artist than another. You know, so I mean, I could, I think Daniel Day Lewis is really the great actor of our generation. I think he just, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's uh, got that great sense of danger too. He's really, really very talented. But I could hang out and talk to any actor. I don't have a problem. But because I, I, an artist, a, a poet, and a singer, and a songwriter like uh, you know Eddie Vedder, that uh, that to me is uh, is stunning. So I guess that's why. I, f I feel just way out of you know, you know, in their presence, uh, or in the presence of that man. I guess I just feel stupid. Did you uh, then you get a chance to chat with him after the show? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, not that show, but uh, you know, but had, had a few uh, a few chats. I got. Uh, I mean, I was just curious what if he had verbal feedback to the set list. Yeah, he said. Uh, Obviously, he approved. He played twenty six out of thirty two. He's got. See, he gave me his email. Now I sent it. Sorry. His email, so mm -hmm. I sent him the when it set list, and he sent it back, and he's like, uh, "Wow, impressive!" He said, "You did a good job with that. You guys did a good job with that set list." Uh, surprised and then, or something, something fun. Uh, said, I, I never sent him. I haven't sent him an email in probably like you know a year and a half or two because it, it just they get right. gross. You're so awesome. Uh, what do you you know? Did you surf today? Um, I saw the the cove. You're right. Screw the Japanese. You know. <laughs> Um, although I had some porpoise at this party last night, and it's, it's kind of a fatty meat. It was sent fresh from Japan. Um, I didn't know until afterwards. I will Needless not eat. I would say, not eat porpoise. Please. Or I won't eat veal. But I love raising them, just in the small <laughs> press. I love making the foie gras. I won't eat it. Uh, so, um, anyways, uh, yeah, he is the one artist in the world that just blows me away. Right, and to have finally be able to connect with him like that is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um, Wow. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that, Thank sir. You, Kevin. Thank you. Um, all right. I believe, uh, sir, I can put off your Larry King game no longer. Uh, very few people take the time, energy, and focus to, uh, to write one. We, ne we never got to this, so I'll just ask quickly your, your uh, opinion of Jeff Beck's Bolero. Um, stunning. Yeah. yeah. I think it's my favorite of the Boleros. By the way, I just want to get your take. Because someone in the dossier, uh, you, someone pressed you about music and, and Bolero in particular. So I thought I would. I love Bolero, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to, i got to tell you right now, Please. I haven't heard Jeff Beck's Bolero. It's quite all right. I appreciate the honesty. And I will, it allows me to say and turn you on to okay. the best one that's out there. All right. Yeah. It's, well, I'll let you decide. All right. Well, we'd like some I know stories. Ravel. Yes. Ravel, Clearly. Bolero. Fairly good version. Yes. Yeah. Acceptable. Yes. Uh, I find it very meditative. Yeah. Okay, if we're going to do this uh, uh, Larry King thing, I should. Jim Shaughnessy, who is here, he wrote this. So. Okay, give yeah. him credit where credit's we'll due. Give him credit. I haven't read this yet, so I'm not sure. Oh, you want to do a quick reading to yourself? No, it's all right. I got it. do a cold. Okay. All right, there's your camera. Larry's down here. A little bit like this, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, we're back. We're back. And a, a good friend of mine, Andy Rooney, has just passed away. I uh, saw him just last week. We were. Uh, sitting out uh, on my front porch, sipping Rob Roy's, and he was uh, rubbing my dowager hump. Uh, and uh, he, he never found its G-spot. Uh, Taintsville, Florida, hello. <laughs> Is anybody uh, not there? Upper Black Eddy, New Jersey, hello. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Jim's nice. Friend. The first one didn't go through. You had to go to the second call. Had to go to the second call. I like that very much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Honestly guys. and truly. Uh, long time fan, first time caller. Yes, sir? Yeah. Before we completely get rid of our guests, it never came up, but I do want to turn people on to a little film that Patrick and I are in together. We share no scenes, unfortunately. I was hoping to Actually, avoid I take this. it back. We kind of do share one. The big wedding business at the end. Spoiler yes. alert. Um, <laughs> but it's a great movie called Made for each other. It sounds like you said it's a great movie. It is. Uh -huh. It is a great, great movie. Uh, a great film. You will laugh, you will cry. Not just enjoyable, uh, but a great film. Waterworld the musical. <laughs> this the man episode. lights up the stage. Needless I, to say. I, lights it up. Can, can you see, what is it? What if I sing, I'm like, I'm still just a man with webbed feet. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's really. Uh, the name of the film again? It's Made for Each Other. I believe you can find it on the Netflix. 
and uh, it appears on the Sundance channel from time to time. Look it up. It's on Amazon. You can buy it or rent it from there, too. Thank you, Sam. There you go. Check Thank it out. Thank you very much. Very and fun. Sam's fantastic in it. Nah, I got well, it. Especially, he can okay. eat some chicken wings, too. Um, I, I don't think I eat a single one. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't chat him? I, I said I don't want the crap on my face, yeah. and I'm never going to pick one up. <laughs> He's so vain, too. Uh, I am yeah. not easy to work with. I am <laughs> no. not easy to work with. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, beyond belief. Uh, loved you in the dish, by the way. Didn't have a chance to mention that. Oh. Have, had, had the chance to see that, and, and uh, nice. Thanks. That's also, the fact that the Aussie, uh, the filmmakers there say, we'd like to uh, have you come in and do a non-comedic role. Must have been pretty exciting for you. Yeah, it was great, because, yeah. you know, in this town, they have a hard time. They don't get it. Outside of, no, they don't. Yeah. I even asked them, I said, this is like the one unfunny character. And you only know me from Seinfeld, right? He goes, yeah. I go, it's the director, Rob Sitch. I said, um, but so you just offer this to me? You think I can do something or it's not you know, silly and stupid? He goes, I reckon you could do that. I'm like, well, thank you for being there on the other side of the planet because nobody. Uh, yeah. 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 No, that, that's why I thought this must have been fun for him. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, please, more of that. And uh, continued success on the rules of engagement. Thank Give my best to uh, Spade, Ollie, and Doug Robbins, who's one of the great ball busters at the poker table I've ever. Uh, Doug, right? Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. unbelievable with, yeah. the ball, with the ball busting. Yeah. Love to come. Attitude. Oh boy. Yeah. And uh, the price of the game steps up a little bit when Doug sits down. Yeah, he'll splash the money around. Yeah. I uh, took him for a few bucks last night. Did you? Yeah. Well, there's no better way to end, by the way, on that. Kevin, I'm a huge fan. I was really, really pleased to get to know that Doug's going to come here and get to do this with you. And uh, I love all your work, so. Thank you. You must not have seen all of it. But uh, it's very kind of you to say. I still think Few Good Men is uh, by far the best film that Tom Cruise ever did. You were amazing in it, and uh, it's one of, one of my favorite pictures. Thanks. It's a great, just an awesome story. Thank you. Awesome yeah. Uh, I, I heard they're doing a restaging of the play. Uh, folks should look out for that. But thank you. Very much. I, yeah, I have to say quick, because I built this, you know, the theater I built in the, it's homemade in my barn. It's not a real, we're not like, it's not like a rich people theater. It's not one of those. But uh, mm -hmm. that was one of the movies I couldn't wait to take the boys out to. I actually took them out um, just a couple, few weeks ago. Really? Film, uh, a few good men again, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. They, they just enjoyed it so much, yeah. Uh, it's one of, those, uh, one of those great, great stories and great films that just doesn't, uh, it doesn't age a day. Did know? they, uh have this experience watching it that you wanted them to? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, it's one of those, you love sharing moments that you're seeing them experience moments for the first time, you know? Right. You know, like that, with that with the Jessup at the table when they're there and, and when he stops them and, and right. talks about how you should address them and just as the tension builds with all that, it's yeah. so great to to watch them experience it all for the first time. So you know every, every word, every moment that's coming in that movie, but you know, after you've seen it a few times, but they, it's great to watch movies for the first time with your kids. I love that. Right on. The good ones. That's pretty yeah. fantastic. And happy to, uh, to be a part of that. So yeah, you must have been. That must have just been. Huge. No, I meant the thing with your sons. The oh. fact that they got to see that. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, the filming of Please. <laughs> Don't get me started. Yeah. Uh, it was extraordinary, yeah. beyond belief. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, top to bottom. Yeah. Being brought up to the majors also it had that aspect yeah. for me in particular. But you're right. It's one of those. I mean, I make fun of it in my stand up back saying, I'll mention it as a way to get to a story, and people will start applauding just out of respect of the film, blah, 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 and I'll downplay it by saying, yeah, it's a great film, and thanks yeah. to TBS, you can see it once a week. I make fun of it on that basis that they play it all the fucking time. Yeah. However, yeah. when you step back from it, yeah. it's nice to hear that this sort of experience still yeah. is possible. Yeah. It's hard you know, when you're that close. Yeah. To uh, and Kevin Bacon is a shitty softball player. He's a shitty softball player. <laughs> that is a great line. <laughs> that is a great line. Oh, uh, man. Uh, thank you again. We'll leave on that. All right. Uh, very, very kind. Uh, all right. Next week, thanks to the auspices of our very own Sam Levine. You know, he's one for three, two for three. Uh, uh, we way had, more than that. We had one no show. Way more than that. How many now? I am, I am batting 900 in this. <laughs> We've had one no show in the history of the show. And it was a Sammy invite, so I, I, I will never stop giving him shit. But he is the reason that Ed O'Neill will be seated at um, this table, different room, next Sunday. Uh, here, here at our new digs. Um, write to us, as always, contact KevinPaulsChatro.com. Uh, after Ed O'Neill, uh, the very uh, fantastic Jamie Lee Fitness, excuse me, Jamie Lee Curtis will be here. Isn't Activia her middle name now? Is he? I'm just asking. She can hurt you. 
I'm, that's I'm, not a question. <laughs> um, and then somebody else kind of great. Uh, we, got, I, we, got, uh, we got Jason Biggs. Biggs. Jason Biggs. Very excited about that. That was another one of those tweet, Twitter reach outs, as it were. Twitter reach around? Uh-huh. The yeah. Twitter reach around. The tweet around. <laughs> mm. uh, so, uh, once again, we thank um, Dr. Chen here in the studio. Uh, I think he out, stayed away. Yeah. He really did stay with us the whole time. Good job. I, I can't really see him in the box that we're shooting from. Uh, you got your Josh Negrin, your Emily Goodwin, your Jason McIntyre. Happy birthday to you again, sir. Uh, and the Mike Rotman. And uh, Adam the Wonderkin, uh, best intern on the planet. And Samantha. Uh, and the great Samantha Ward, who makes me look also aged since I saw you last. Happy birthday. Stop. Um, she makes me look at least a week younger, and I thank her for that each and every week. She makes me look like a woman. It's I would. As opposed to, because, you know, j Max says that my glasses make my face look distorted. Thank God that came up before we ended the show. Oh, that's what we go out on. It was a close call. So that j Max can now go see, hopefully, the Stillers uh, take down Baltimore. Otherwise, <laughs> it's an awful, awful year. Oh, you said Steelers. I thought you said Stillers, like Jerry and Ann were going to go. You know, there's a fight uptown or something. <laughs> the Stillers. The Stillers, yeah. Jerry and, and uh, Ben, Yeah. they're going to take on the, the, the Reiners. <laughs> the Reiners. The Stillers and the Reiners are going to go at it tonight at the Arrow Theater. I love it. <laughs> Get your tickets. Please look for that. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> um, until then, and as always, Get out of my face.